Order. Um, welcome to the Metro Council. Today is May 7, 2019. Will all members of the Council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by our own Council Member Erica Gilmore. Thank you. Will we please bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear God, we come before you asking that you continue to bless our great city, asking that you bless each one of the residents in our city. You know our needs and our desires. We ask as council members and mayors and vice mayors that we can come together and do what's best in the interest of all citizens, moving aside our desires and our wants and our needs and putting our residents first so that we can do the will of the people and we can make Nashville an even greater city than it is now. All these and many other blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for the adoption of the minutes? April 16, 2019. Motion second. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Mr. Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. All right, thank you. All right, a couple things before do we get to some committee reports. First of all, um, Council member uh, Jonathan Hall, uh, his, some of his family members were involved in an accident, a car accident today. Um, our thoughts go out uh, to his family. I think everybody's okay. Um, I believe the kids are all right. I think his uh, fiance has had to stay overnight. But um, uh, does anybody have any additional information? I think he, um, that's the last I had heard. So um, please remember um, Council member Hall um, in your thoughts and prayers. A um, couple of other things. Um, on, a, um, on a brighter note, uh, today is Council Member Brenda Haywood's birthday. So happy birthday. A couple of other things. Um, today will be our, um, uh, the last meeting that Danielle Godin will be in attendance. Uh, working for the Metro Council. Um, she is moving on, uh, but we certainly appreciate, appreciate everything that she has done for us. Uh, and we will miss her, even though uh, in her new job, I think she'll be up here anyway. So um, anyway, if you will um, join me in thanking Danielle for all her work for the Council. <laughs> So um, also, as I was walking around the chamber, I also noticed that there was a lot of stuff on Council Member Porterfield's uh, desk. Uh, Council Member Porterfield's birthday was yesterday. <laughs> oh, and your daughter's birthday is today? Well, happy birthday to your daughter, all right. All right, it's also Mother's Day next Sunday, so don't forget that. Um, two other things that I need to mention. Um, so um, Council Member Vircher, I know, um, has um, sent out information, but our budget hearings will start tomorrow at 4.15 uh, in the Council Chamber. And if you will look on your desk, I believe that you have um, the budget. Uh, the budget has been provided to all members but anyway, our budget hearings will start tomorrow at 4.15. All members are welcome and the public is welcome as well. Um, I believe everybody has a copy of the schedule. There was a uh, PowerPoint presentation that was sent out by the mayor's office information. Uh, so we have um, a pretty solid uh, uh, several weeks in front of us in terms of going over the departments and the budget. 
I will also mention that um, uh, the TIF study group, uh, which was headed up by uh, Council Member Mendez, has completed its work on time. Uh, the report will be issued tomorrow and on May 20th at 3 p.m. Uh, in the Council Chamber there will be presentation on that report. So uh, we'll make sure that everybody gets notice about that as well. The one last thing I will mention is um, um, as I was coming over here, it's my understanding that there may have been a, uh, another school shooting. This is in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Do not have much detail on what has happened, but um, uh, again, our thoughts go out um, to that city. Uh, Council Member Swope. Thank you, I just heard this coming into committee meetings at four o'clock. Two people are under arrest for shooting. There are injuries, but at, as of four o'clock, no one was critically injured or no fatalities. Okay. So anyway, our, uh, again, um, our, our, our thoughts and prayers again go out to that community and that school. So uh, committee reports on matters other than legislation, anything else that we need to talk about in terms of other committees? Uh, seeing none, we are ready for elections and confirmations. Uh, I will call on uh, uh, Chairperson Lee uh, for a report from uh, the Elections and, and Confirmations Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for the Arts Commission, the appointment of Mr. David Ewing and Ms. Campbell West was approved six to zero. Uh, the reappointment of Mr. Ethan Link to the Silver Service Service Commission was approved six to zero. Uh, the appointment of Mr. Benjifer, Benjamin Hubbard to the Community Corrections Advisory Board was deferred for one meeting. The appointment of Ms. Angela Crane Jones um, to the Farmers Market Board was approved six to zero. The reappointment of Mr. George Anderson to the Parks and Recreation Board was approved six to zero. The reappointment of Mr. Uh, Orr and Reverend Harris to the Social Services Commission was approved four to zero. And I would like to move these appointments. All right, so I got a motion uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of all the confirmation say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. So let me make sure I've got all these. Um, for, um, if you will stand when I call your name. Uh, for the Arts Commission, uh, Mr. David Ewing and Ms. Campbell West. Uh, for the Civil Service Commission, Mr. Ethan Link. For the Farmers Market Board, Ms. Angela Crane Jones. For the Parks and Recreation Board, Mr. George Anderson. And for the Social Services Commission, I have Reverend William Harris and Mr. Phil Orr. So um, you have been approved on to your respective uh, boards and commissions on behalf of the entire Metro Council. Uh, I wanna thank you for your willingness to serve and volunteer your time and expertise. A big thank you from the city and from the Metro Council. All right, so there are more members uh, in the back now than in the front of the chamber. So we are now ready for uh, bills on public hearing. Um, we are obviously happy to hear from the public on each of these bills. What I'll do is I'll call them up in order. Um, if you want to speak on a particular bill, 
Uh, you will be given three minutes each, during which time we ask that you begin uh, when you come up to the podium, if you will come up and share your name and address. Um, we always respectfully ask that you re uh, do not repeat what other people have shared, and please be respectful of all parties. Uh, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the bills up one at a time. Uh, when we get there, uh, unless the sponsor defers on the public hearing, uh, we will open the public hearing. We will look for a show of hands of those in favor and then a show of hands of those who are in opposition. And then if you would like to speak again, if you will come up to the podium in the back, you've got three minutes. And um, if you will identify yourself and your address, that would be great. The first bill up on the bills on public hearing is BL 2018-1400. Uh, this was approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on 8-1-2018. It changes 0.18 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 712 26th <laughs> Avenue North. Uh, Council Member Kendall, this is your bill. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I want to defer this bill. Okay. So um, there is a motion to defer. Uh, how, how long do you want to defer this? Uh, let's defer it two meetings. Uh, when you say two meetings, are you talking about? First, uh, first meeting, I guess. And um, so uh, this is the first meeting in May. We don't have public hearings the first meeting in June, so it would be the first meeting in July. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so the deferral will be to the first meeting in July. Okay, properly seconded. Any discussions on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, the bill is deferred to the first meeting in July. Uh, bill 2018-1416 by Council Members Henderson, Anthony Davis, and others amends the Metro Code regarding tree density removal and replacement requirements. Um, Council Member Henderson, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to defer this bill, please, to the first meeting in July with a brief explanation. Okay, so there's a motion to defer to the first meeting in July, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we have had uh, several stakeholder meetings uh, about uh, this bill, um, and we appreciate all the uh, input, uh, both from the development community and the advocacy community. I would like to give a special thank you uh, to Sean Shepard and Director Kemp uh, for the time uh, spent with this bill. Colleagues, this is extremely complicated, <laughs> this, this effort, um, but I know we're all hearing uh, from the community uh, just that they have a real concern about the, uh, the restoration of, uh, of our tree canopy and the maintenance of that as well. So we're continuing to meet with internal and external stakeholders um, to make this the best bill that it can be. And to that, uh, to that effort, um, we're going to take a little bit more time. And with that, I would renew my motion uh, to defer to the first meeting in July and also share with the public that this is scheduled to be before the Planning Commission on June 13th. All right. Thank you, Council Member. So the motion is to defer to the first meeting in July. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, the motion is to defer to the first meeting in July. Uh, next bill up, BL 2019-1559 by Council Member Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 12 13 2018. Changes 0.2 acres from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 616 Vester Avenue. Councilmember Hastings, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Would like to open a public hearing, please. All right, so I declare the public hearing open. Uh, I'd like to see a show of hands of those who are here in support of this measure. Show of hands of those people who are here in opposition to this matter. So I see no one here on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hastings, you're recognized. Yes, sir, Mr. President, we'd like to move for approval. Okay, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no, you adopt on second hearing. Now I've got BL 2019-1568 by Council Member Kendall. Uh, this was a disapproved bill by the Planning Commission 6 on 228 2019 Changes 0.64 acres from ORI to MUIA zoning for property located at 2221 Ellison Place and 114 and 118 Louise Avenue. Uh, Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This one is going to have to be deferred as well. 
I believe that was a notice problem in terms of the uh, sponsor. <coughs> That's correct. So um, it's my understanding, again, that, yeah, this will have to be deferred, so it will be deferred to the, the first meeting in July. That's correct. All right, so that's an automatic deferral. First meeting in July, uh, BL 2019-1568 is deferred to the first meeting in July. BL 2019-1569 by Council Member Scott Davis. Disapproved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 110-2019, changes 2.3 acres from RS5 to RM20 zoning for property located at 1804 and 1806 Lishy Avenue. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open up the public hearing, please. Okay. Because it's a disapproved, I think we have to see some slides. We're going to go to the planning department. This is a request to rezone property from RS5 single family residential to RM20 multifamily residential. Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove. The property is currently lo is, is located on Lishy Avenue north of Edith Avenue and is currently zoned RS5, which is residential single family, 5,000 square foot minimum lot size. The land use policy is T4 Urban Neighborhood Evolving, and it is also within the Highland Heights study area. The Highland Heights study area includes supplemental policies that cover all of the property. Um, this was recently adopted by the Planning Commission in June of 2018. There was extensive community engagement involved in the adoption of the policy, and it established a supplementary building regulating plan and a mobility plan. This property is within the R4 <coughs> subdistrict of the Highland Heights policy area. It does support a range of uses. Um, however, there's also a mobility plan. The mobility plan indicates the need for certain alleys and streets to be added into the area. So the R4 subdistrict does envision to accommodate additional density, but that density should be in concert with the installation of public infrastructure. There's no existing alley right-of-way, and the proposed RM20 zoning would not require the dedication or building of an alley, which would be uh, to meet the goals of the Highland Heights study. Without the alley um, infrastructure prescribed by the plan, the requested zoning is inappropriate. Therefore, the Planning Commission recommended disapproval. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized again. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Could I see a show of hands if those people are here in favor of the measure? All right. Thank you. Show of hands of those people here in opposition to the measure. Okay. Uh, so uh, would those in favor wish to speak? If so, if you will come to the uh, podium in the back. Microphone is on. Again, you have three minutes. If you will identify yourself and your address. And I have uh, warned Pastor Fuzz that he has only three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed ahead, you're recognized. Give me some of your minutes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Good evening, Metro Council. My name is Jessica Williams, and I am the applicant and developer on this site. I, reside, I live at 2115 Yemen Place, and I am a constituent of District 5, where I've lived for the last seven years. I have had the opportunity to purchase at Fifth and Main Condos through the ability of having an affordable unit. Once I noticed that that option was no longer available to Nashville, I wanted to figure out what can I do to help with affordable units. I also have a passion for smart growth development. I have traveled to many cities to learn and understand what does it take for a city to grow intelligently together? How can we bring people together, communities together, and make a, a, a good positive impact? I am here because I am requesting a RM20 rezone on 2.3 acres at 1804 and 1806 Lishiav. It has 242 feet of frontage. It is 459 feet deep. I border an approved SP for 158 homes that have uh, townhouses as well as condos. There is also a, board, um, a proposed street on the border of my property where we have uh, 
propose different connections to be able to connect into them at some point. I was asked if I would do a Pacific plan. What I've noticed about the Pacific plans is that they are lingering on the market. We have about five in our area that are not being built, and it makes me question the process as to what, why are these SPs not being built? You have a lot of vacant land, um, uh, empty houses, and it's just sitting there, and we do not have that growth in the community. With more inventory, comes better affordability. And right now in Highland Heights, we do not have enough new construction on the market, and we have very large properties that do support that infrastructure. And so with that being said, I hope that you consider this as an approval. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bradley Chaubert. I live at 4000 Anderson Road, and I hope to live in District 5 soon if this project goes through. I have known Ms. Williams for quite a long time and I've actually followed this uh, project since the infancy stage. Um, she's put her blood, sweat, tears, and, and prayers into this project. And uh, I don't have a, anything other than wanting to live in the community, no dog in this fight, except for I believe in the integrity of this young woman. Uh, I've heard her on the back burner and she's so passionate about this project. Um, by changing the zoning and taking, it would roughly take 12 home sites away from this and then the engineering cost alone would raise the lot cost so much to where it would not be affordable housing. And I'm not gonna call this affordable housing, but I'm gonna say anything in the high twos in East Nashville right now is very affordable. I'm sorry, but everything else is 399 to 449. So by uh, changing the zoning to this, to what, uh, from an RM20 to an SP, it, it's it's going to make it to where it's just another house sitting on the market like everything else is right now. So that's all. Bradley Chaubert, thank you. Thank you. How's it going? My name is Brent Thompson, born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm not going to sit up and act like I'm a real estate guru or anything like that, but I can say that I'm a product of a homeowner. And before I was a product of a homeowner, you know, the family that I grew up in was used to the Section 8 housing, used to wasting money on apartment living. And I think the value of growing up in a home that you own, and it can impact a generation, not just, you know, every year wondering where you're going to live at. And I think having an affordable home, I mean, if I look at my college friends and my high school friends, basically high school friends, I could say, most of those households are still in apartments. It's not because they got bad parents, but mostly because it's single family house homes. And how can they afford to ever get a mortgage? You know, unless they go back to school, but can they really afford to do that? So I just think, like I said, I don't really know everything about this project like that, but I do know, you know, I thought the goal of the city was to have one Nashville, one, one community. So like, why not have affordable homes? Sir, um, can I get your address? Um, 209 Clear Lake Drive, Nashville, right. Tennessee. All right, thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Kiana Johnson. I reside at 614 Poplar Place, but I lived at 1606 Jones for most of my life. Um, thank you for your service to the city of Nashville Metro Council. I want to express my sincere support for this bill. As the city grows, it's important that our policies for creating new homes are effective and attainable for all. As an educator, I would like to see more house, housing choices in the city of Nashville. I was recently in the market to buy a home and was forced to look outside in Clarksville because there was no affordable homes here in Tennessee, here in Nashville. Um, I would love to live where I work and where my child plays. Thank you. So just uh, uh, for purpose of the audience, I usually am supposed to bang the gavel. We, we would appreciate if people don't clap even though I know you're here in support. So, um, um, ma'am, if you would come on up, state your name and address. Hello, my name is Anita Garrison-Cruz. I live at 1628 Chase Street. Um, hello, Metro Council. I just wanna say that I am in support of this bill because I actually am a homeowner in a neighboring area of Highland Heights, and I want to see more growth and development. Um, there are many homes growing, um, as was stated earlier, that are not affordable. Um, I live in an area that I would love to see affordable homes so I can have more neighbors, but um, 
they're just sitting there. And so I do want to just kind of help push Nashville to grow together rather than to have an area segregated away from the development while the rest of the city grows. Amen. All right, thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Devon Brooks and I live at 2521 Pennington Bend Road, Nashville, Tennessee. I would first like to thank you all for your service and commitment to the betterment of Davidson County and its residents and businesses. Last week, I visited the site of Ms. Jessica Williams' proposed zoning change and residential development. The sites at 1804 and 1806 Lishy Avenue have great potential for the smart and community conscious project planned. Jessica's approach to development represents an awareness of community needs and wants. Highland Heights, just like Nashville at large, needs housing and more so affordable housing. Local real estate developers like Jessica are a crucial component to meeting this need and density is their best tool. The pathways from problem to solution are clear. Increased density in the residential development allows for internal subsidization of site purchase price, the site infrastructural costs, and ultimately the end market price point of the housing product created. Creating a new supply of housing inventory at a lower price point encourages community investment from home buyers. Increased investment in an area brings new opportunities for community growth. Rezoning the ARM 20 provides the density and flexibility needed by the developer to execute this project, unlike restrictions and delays that an SP presents. Having walked the area, seen the site plans, and listened to the community-based story behind the project, I fully support Bill BL 2019-1569. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is David Scales. I live at 4616 Center Court, and um, uh, I ask that you vote uh, yes for the approval or rezoning of this property. Um, it was previously owned by my mother, and I was the administrator of this state, so I know Jessica has worked hard on this, and, and um, I think it would be good for the neighborhood. All right. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sonia Smith. I live at 2300 10th Avenue South, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. I would like to start off with uh, my derailment with planning. Please listen to this voicemail. Project with Metro Planning, just calling you back about the property at 2300 10th Avenue South. Um, so this was discussed at our staff meeting yesterday, and um, the feedback is that uh, it's not something that planning would likely support since there's no alley access. Now, my, I am, I, there is an alley behind my house. I went down to pick up a, I went to planning because I wanted to demolish my property and put up two like everyone else was in the neighborhood. But because of planning, not knowing that there was an alley behind my house, they told me that I could not do it. And they've derailed me ever since. I, uh, Public Works uses this undocumented alley. I've paid taxes on it, or the family has paid taxes on it since 1964. So planning did not do their work when it came to my property and an alley. Here it is right here. I also met with the senior advisor, Mr. Brandon Barnett at the time, who told me to go and build a dadu. Uh, he and Carrie Logan told me I should go and build a dadu. Then they derailed me again by sending my information to Robin Ziegler, who then there, and told me that I couldn't do it because of a proposed overlay. Well, I submit to you that on November the 6th, after I met with Kerry Logan and Brandon, that they issued a demolition permit to um, 905 Walkirch, three doors down from me. So the planning department is not clear or does not know the street and does not know the area, nor do they go out and survey it. So I am totally in support of this young lady and her project. Hello, I'm Kitina Carney. I'm a native of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I too had to move out of Nashville because it was too expensive to live. I'm also a real estate agent and I work with Miss Jessica. And I work with, with families trying to get them in homes. They've been pre-approved, but not able to find affordable home here in Nashville. So I have about 10 clients now who are trying to buy homes. They work hard, 
they fix their credit, they budget, but because the homes are too expensive, they can't live here. So I too support Jessica Williams project. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, could I get your address before you leave? I live at 1269 Winterset Drive. All right, here in Nashville? No, I, I had to move out of Nashville, like I said, because it's not affordable. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Christopher Williams and I reside at 636 Cato Ridge Lane. I just first wanted to thank you for your dedication to the city. I know your positions can sometimes be, can sometimes be challenging. I want to take a moment to express my support for this bill. I've been a resident of Nashville for close to 16 years. Um, in 2012, I was afforded the opportunity to um, purchase my first home and in the Nashville area when prices were affordable. Um, as we fast forward to today's housing market, it has become increasingly challenging for individuals to purchase a home. Um, I know the importance of workforce housing and greater density gives it an opportunity for prices um, for homes to come down so that more individuals can be able to afford their homes. Um, Nashville is growing and we must be able to keep up with the growth and allow better price points for individuals looking to purchase homes for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Richard Forberg. I live at 258 Cherokee Station Drive. And um, I've been in Nashville for three and a half years. I met Jessica Williams about three or four months ago. And we've been working very closely together about trying to get support for a more aggressive, more effective transit plan around Nashville so that we can have more affordable housing in Nashville and better connections between the high density housing and job sites in downtown. This particular site happens to be located on Leachy Avenue, which has a transit line. It's located a half a block, one and a half blocks from Trinity Avenue, which has a transit line. It's located a half a mile from Dickerson Pike, which is due to be a high density corridor. And my understanding is that anything within a half mile of a high density corridor can also be considered high density. I do realize that none of these considerations have been taken into account in the plans that the planning department's working from. But looking forward, this region should become, this area of East Nashville should become a higher density region since it's only about three and a half miles from downtown, it provides a very effective location for a lot of affordable housing for people that need to work downtown or in other places in East Nashville. I'll also note that there are other locations in East Nashville and throughout the county that have high-rise buildings. And in fact, one is about to be built or might be built at Murphy Road in West End that's six stories higher than allowed. And it's going to be, I guess, some 36 stories. Uh, where today there is just a little bank branch and that is probably going to get approved at some point, given how these things seem to go. But we can't yet get, or it's already approved, we cannot yet seem to get high density in this part of East Nashville, which is so close to downtown. It makes no sense to me at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Vice um, Mayor Schulman and Metro Council members. My name is Carol Campbell, 700 Strickland Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm in East Nashville. I am the co-founder of a nonprofit organization called Leave the Light On Foundation. And um, we've been servicing caregivers since 2010. And Jessica Williams has been helping our foundation since 2014. I'm here today to tell you that the Litchie Avenue uh, project is going to benefit from, um, it's going to benefit caregivers, and I'll tell you how. But first I wanted to back up and tell you a little bit about what Jessica Williams has done with us. One of the programs we have is a pampering day. So if you've ever taken care of a sick mother or father or disabled brother, uh, you know how stressful that is. And so we had a pampering day where we bring in caregivers and give them free massages and manicures and et cetera. And Jessica Williams, when I first met her back in 2014, jumped right in and said, how can I help? She's also helped us with various workshops, um, including like financial planning workshops. So those of you who have had to deal with estate planning because of an elderly parent that is passing away or something to that effect, she connected us with a financial planner to help us with that. Um, fast forward to now, we now have a program called Neighbors Who Care, where we extend our services from just caregivers to anyone who's in need of care. Um, Jessica has committed a percentage of the proceeds from this project that will significantly help caregivers and those in need of care in the Highland Heights area. 
mind you, if this does not get passed, we're gonna do it anyway, but this specific project is earmarked to help caregivers, those who need help. We have literally driven through Highland Heights area and we looked at people and said, oh, that person looks like they need a new roof. That person needs, needs a new handrail. And so I'm asking you to support this so that we can support residents of Highland Heights. Thank you. All right, thank you. Greetings, my name is Erica Hudson and my address is 512 Park Court, Nashville, Tennessee. And I am here to support the development as well. I'm here as a former Head Start teacher. I was a Head Start teacher for 10 years here in Nashville. And what I noticed as a Head Start teacher, um, we would have to do something called home visits. And as I was talking to the parents, they expressed concerns about many times having to live outside of where the schools were located. And they were having to do this because they could not afford where the schools were located. So therefore, they were living outside of those areas. So directly, this affected their ability to get to school on time with their children. So this affected their education. It, it affected um, behavioral problems in the classroom because the children were no longer able to start their day off the correct way because they were coming to school late due to staying outside of the area that they should be in where they could have their home. Um, it also affects, um, just in general, it would affect people picking up their children in the evenings because we have to realize that these parents don't have just one child. They may have two or three children that they're trying to pick up. So I believe in this project that it will um, help the community very well to help parents, help families, help children. It's really a domino effect because when the child um, when children are not helped, it's a domino effect because they cannot get the education they can need. We cannot have communication with the parents about the concerns that we have. Um, it affects um, children getting into gangs and other things that happen. So we really do need this to go ahead and pass. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Courtney Fulham. I reside at 5719 Brentwood Meadow Circle here in Brentwood. I'm here today to speak to the project and development to be procured by Jessica Williams. I believe this is a much needed project to meet the needs of East Nashville community as it speaks to the workforce housing needs. As a lender who works with Jessica as well as the Barnes Foundation, I share Nashville's commitment to meet the, its housing crisis for affordable housing. This project does complement its neighborhood and is also meant to improve Nashville's housing goals. I believe Ms. Williams' passion to help this community is an unselfish attempt to share not only a housing dream for future homeowners, but also to meet the American dream to provide housing for its family and its generations to come. As a HUD certified first time home buyer counselor, I look forward to an approval for this project. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Quentin Dickerson, I'm the lead pastor of United Family Fellowship. The address is 208 Gatewood Avenue, which happens to be located in the Highland Heights area as well. In this area, as we know, everybody's spoken before me, I believe this without, without fear or contradiction is simply this, that even my members as well have asked for affordable housing right where it is that they go to worship on Sundays and Wednesdays where it is that they're pouring into their heart, soul, hard-earned money as well. <clears throat> Jessica being the one that has done such a tremendous job putting this project together, and I think it would be really uh, a, really a, just a, a stab in the back to say that we would not approve this wonderful project to give affordable housing where it is that not only my members are worshiping at, not only not my members, but just the community as well as in large. One of the things we know, as in fact in America, that student loans are at an all-time high. And it's unfortunate where it is that you come out of college and you cannot afford to get a home or own a home after the first two years or three years after college. So people like Jessica Williams, we're grateful for that have put this project there. So I'm asking you, council, I'm asking you, uh, community, please vote yes to this wonderful project that Jessica has outlined for the community of Highland Heights. All right, thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council. Thank you for being here tonight. I want to um, ask you that, you that you support this bill. 
um, primarily for one. This is an urban district. This isn't a suburban district. This isn't an urban district. Two, many of you are going to probably be faced with the decision of whether or not to approve another mass transit bill in the coming years. In those coming years, we need to have the density in this particular area, this urban district, to support a transit plan that makes sense. And a part of the, 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 uh, the disapproval from planning is based on the fact that she's not going to put an extra road and create co connectivity. And these are things that the city used to do in terms of with our tax dollars. They used to f afford the city the connectivity and creating alleys and creating the infrastructure that's needed to support this type of project. So please support this because it's needed, because you're going to need it in the future for transit, and because this is what the city is designated to do in terms of providing the infrastructure. Thank you. Uh, could I get your name and address, please? Ben Jordan, 10, 1011 North 5th Street. All right, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council, Dwayne Cuthbertson, 1806 Allison Place. Uh, at the risk of repeating a lot of what you've heard, I'm here uh, representing uh, a number of owners, property owners in the Highland Heights neighborhood, those that own property nearby, as well as abutting this property. And they've asked me to come and express support <coughs> for the requested zoning. Uh, it's our, it's our uh, position that this property is situated in a context that supports additional density, and we feel like the requested zoning would allow for a variety of housing, would support transit as well as walkable communities. So uh, we feel like this zoning moves us a lot closer to the broader goals of the Highland Heights plan as well as those expressed in Nashville next. Thanks. Thank you. Timothy Hudson, 512 Park Court, Nashville, Tennessee. I noticed we prayed before we started. That's what that neighborhood needs, a whole entire facelift. Something that our community, our people, our children will see and give our children hope in that community. I was in that community walking the street smoking every day. I was in a recreation home over in the community where they assaulted me at. We need, to, we need a facelift in those communities so we will have something to stand on years from now, the future of our children. We keep, they keep seeing the same cycle in these communities where no, like, nobody wants to help them at all. You get rid of the old, I know what the community is about. Majority of the people here know what the community is about. But when you get rid of the old and bring new into the community, you give people hope and life. Some people can't afford to, to fix their houses. I remodel houses now for a living. Some people can't come out their pocket with forty, fifty thousand dollars for a roof or for a subfloor. But what are the what is the community seeing, and how are they reacting? They, it's like nobody has hope in us no more over there. And that's what they're gonna breed on and live on. And that's how they're gonna react. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Priscilla Dickerson. I worship at 208 Gatewood in the Highland Heights area. Um, I wholeheartedly support this program, um, this bill, because as a realtor and as a former educator, I know the significance as far as what has already been mentioned as far as going out, allowing children to see that there is an opportunity, there is hope, there is the potential to own once you own something, you take pride in it. Also, on a side note, I know that Ms. Jessica Williams personally is, is dedicated to the cause of such because of the fact that she was my realtor when I purchased our home. And I know how much she has a passion for people and going forth and doing what is best. So I wholeheartedly ask that you support this bill and support Jessica so that she can do those things that will enable our community to be at its best for all. Thank you. My name is Gary Dickerson. That is my wife and that is my pastor. And we go to church in that area. I also work near that area for the state. And I see the, the progress, which is great, 
but we also have to have, as everybody else said, something that people can afford. And it's, it's getting out of hand, but we, you know, if you're gonna work down here, you gotta be able to live down here also. So I just wanna say I support Ms. Williams. She is a very nice and very dedicated and very smart young lady. And we just ask that you approve this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Bill McCleskey. My address is 320 O'Hickory Boulevard and here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, last week, Jessica called me and she was adamant about me going out to the property in uh, Highland Heights on Lishy Avenue to take a look at the property and, and walk through uh, a part of the uh, community. And I told Jessica, I'm busy, you know, I, I run a technology company downtown. I, I'm, you know, I, I believe in it, send me some documents. And uh, again, she was adamant about me coming out so after I convinced her to pay my next mortgage, I showed up. No, I'm joking. So, but I showed up, it was hot, had on a suit, and we're talking, and I'm telling her to tell me about this property and tell me what you're gonna do and show me the documents and what's your plan and, and what's your vision. And not only could I see her passion, but I saw that uh, she'd done her homework. I saw that uh, she knew the details. Uh, of the project and, and what she wanted to do. And, and, and she had uh, put her blood, sweat, and tears into this over time. And, and Jessica and I are both graduates of Fisk University here in Nashville. And a few values that Fisk University instilled in us were uh, uh, integrity, initiative, and, and having a positive impact, being industrious in our community. And I'm, I'm positive that with Jessica playing a, a, an impactful role in this development, that uh, this project will have a positive uh, benefit on the community. Not only the constituents there and, and, and the, the housing, the affordable housing that could come out of it, but as an entrepreneur, I saw opportunity for more small business engagement as well. Uh, so I highly support this endeavor. Thanks a lot. Sir, I, th I think I need your address. Yeah, 320 Old Hickory Boulevard. Okay. All right, thank you. Hi. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm a little nervous and I stutter, so. Just That's okay, take your time. Um, my name is um, Jimmy Cabato, and I'm in complete support of Jessica Williams' bill. My... Um, Address is 313 Rainwood Court, Nashville, Tennessee, um, 37207. Um, I'm just a regular working individual, and I'm in complete support of it because I understand that majority of us are struggling, and we're working, and we're still struggling. So, so the affordable housing would definitely help individuals such as myself and and others who are struggling to to live in housing that's of course affordable and and worth it um i'm also a homeowner i own my home i bought my home back in 2009 um and my house if you don't mind me saying it was worth 110,000. And right now, because of the housing market, it has increased. But because of the housing market, if I wanna move, where am I gonna go? Because the housing market is so high. Um, my friend, she she got approved for, um, for $232,000 to get a home, which is a lot. But because of the rising economy, it's not enough. She, to get the house that she was looking for, she needed at least 260000 So I say all that just to say I support it because, because of the housing market, what we deemed affordable in the past is not affordable to us now. So we're all struggling. We're all, we're, at least I know myself, I'm one check away from, from being homeless because of Nashville's growing economy. And yes, Nashville is growing and the NFL draft was here, which is great, but the Nashvillians who live here, we're struggling because of the draft, because of 
the growing Titans team and all that. So, you know, I, I, I'm in full support of the bill okay. for Jessica Williams. Thank you. My name is Taurus McCain. I live at 3021 Point of View Boulevard. Um, I'm a developer. Um, I did probably the third SP in Salem Town. And I think um, what I want to express is that she's been working on this project for two and a half years. So she's not trying to circumvent doing the SP. She's trying to make sure she has the flexibility to add more um, affordable units to it. Like she said, it's been uh, five SPs approved in that area, and uh, they're still sitting because they didn't have the flexibility. Uh, I also want to address what planning said as far as the uh, infrastructure, as far as the alley. You cannot get a zoning permit <clears throat> without public works signing off. So it's no way that you, she could even build anything on that site without getting public works to approve it, and they will not approve it unless you improve or add the um, uh, alley. So she's, again, she's not trying to circumvent uh, anything. Uh, also, I think you've seen by the uh, outpour uh, to attest to her character and her commitment to the community. Uh, um, she's, and I can also attest to her commitment to the community. And I believe that you've also heard the commitment to, I'm sorry, the uh, people the nice civilians saying that we definitely need affordable housing and 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 approving this project will allow for that to happen thanks all right thank you good afternoon my name is uh adric kimbrough and my address is 1920 upland drive nashville tennessee 372 one six, which is located in East Nashville. Also, I pastor a church uh, in East Nashville on Montgomery off of Douglas, and I've had an opportunity to see uh, a lot of transition over the last 16 years of pastoring in East Nashville. I also had an opportunity to attend Swab on Dickinson Road and uh, Junior High at Highland Heights. And a lot of gentrification has taken place. A lot of housing. Uh, people cannot afford to live in uh, a good housing environment. Uh, like a young lady said, that she had to move because she could not uh, afford to live in Nashville anymore. And if I had not uh, purchased a house in 2000, I probably wouldn't be able to afford to live in Nashville anymore. Uh, either. So uh, when I learned about Jessica Williams and her project and Invest Smart and her mental capacity and I just did some research on her and what she's uh, done, you know, I was excited about, you know, a young lady with uh, taking the initiative to even step out on faith to even try to do a project like this. And I think that she should have the opportunity to try to make this uh, a reality, to make this possible, because a lot of people are dependent on affordability. A lot of people are dependent on being able to live in Nashville. As you already heard, a lot of people uh, graduate today, but they still can't afford to live in Nashville, and that's because the cost of living is so high, and the houses are so high, and so, when you have somebody trying to do a plan to create an equal playing field for everybody, I think they ought to be given the opportunity. So I support this bill. Thank you. Hello, uh, greetings council. Uh, my name is Dominique Bass. My address is 707 East Clark Boulevard in Murfreesboro. Uh, I had to move to Murfreesboro because like most people said, uh, Nobody from Nashville can live in Nashville anymore. Uh, and that's, you know, any anything that can be done, f any power that you guys have to make more afford, and we're not talking about Section A housing. We're talking about houses that people, hardworking people, uh, I'm a veteran of the, of the United States Army. I would love to buy a house. I make decent money. 
I can't buy anything in Nashville right now. Uh, so I don't want to have to I work in Nashville. I live in Murfreesboro. I got to commute. I got to do this mind numbing commute every single day. And anything that you guys could do to help Miss Williams. I've known Miss Williams 10 years when she, she she's got her mindset on this. Help her help the community. That's all. Y'all have a good day. All right. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Reverend Enoch Fuzz. I live at 903 33rd Avenue North. And when I get home tonight, I don't expect to see any of you there in my parking lot. <laughs> but you know what? I, I have to appreciate, and I got vice mayor, and then my own councilman, and then Mr. Glover, and my homegirl, and everybody, Detective Primore, and uh, just all of y'all. I've worked with so many councils, Danica, did I get it right? <laughs> it took me three years to learn how to say your name. And, and I've gone with councils way back into like the 90s when, when Mr. Armstead was on council, and we worked with council. A lot of times they tell me, Reverend, you don't know how it works, Ms. Hurt. And I do know how it works. I got smart friends around me. God has given me, you know, these big developers who meet with me often and talk to me and share with me. And you know what they say? They're all saying some of the same things. That we're hindering our city by some of the regulations and how we make it hard. One of them today told me, come and get this is Peyton. I think she likes you. She does. Okay, the, the clock stopped while she was doing that. <laughs> One of the developers told me today, and, and many of them have said this. They said, he said, you know what? By the city holding up my project, you're losing $88,000 a month in property taxes. I'm gonna tell you something. I met this young lady, Miss Jessica. She's a Fisk graduate. And I have five people. You know, I, I know the big guys, and I won't call their names, it's many of them. But my daddy said to me, son, always take time out for the little guy. And I came down here tonight for one of those little guys. Because my big guys, they're doing okay. They tell me about how much money they make. So I spent a lot of time looking at this project, Scott Davis. I spent a lot of time. I've been out there. It's been 20 hours of my time investigating, reading, hearing what planning said. I know y'all ain't got it. I feel sorry for y'all to have to go through all of that. Man. But let me tell you something. I read planning say they didn't like it, and it was based on what some of the residents said. But one of the developers have always said, and I wondered, I would not ask a 10-year-old how to drive a car. And we're asking people who know nothing. And I don't want to demean those folk, but they don't know about development, smart city planning, and the complaints that planning had about this project. I know y'all don't go against planning. What is that? <laughs> Jesus. That's, that's your sign. Uh, that I you got two seconds. Stop. I know planning said it, but, and y'all don't go against planning. But we need to do the right thing tonight. We're hindering the city. I got five people who are being hindered, and this city is in court over things like this. I'm working with two court cases like this. And do you know, do you really know they're not violating these civil rights of these property owners? Do you know that we're not violating the constitutional rights of these property owners? So remember what I said. What are you going to do? That's the best vice mayor in the whole wide okay, world. Okay, thank you, Pastor Fuzz. You still want me to tell you something? Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. You may want to pull the microphone down. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Talisha Huddleston, and um, I do support Jessica Williams' bill. And um, I stand here today unashamed with the small piece of my story that I'm gonna share with you all. I used to be ashamed, but I no longer am. Um, I am a widow, a mother of two. When my husband passed away, we were forced to move from our home out of fear because we were attacked. 
Um, that left me and my children forced to move into uh, a home that I could barely afford. I was told that um, to get on public assistance, um, I didn't qualify for public housing. Therefore, I, I paid rent on my own that was over $1,500 a month, not including utilities, food, gas to get to work. Plenty of days we, I debated about whether I should put gas in my car or buy food for my children to eat. However, I was evicted from that place. I suffer a, an eviction, but a paid eviction. And right today, I cannot get a place to live because I was evicted, because there is nothing affordable here in Nashville. By God's grace, my husband left me a piece of land that we can't get on either, because to run water lines on Trail Hollow Lane, it's going to cost me $100,000. Me and my two children, we live in a hotel. I pay almost $600 a week so that we can have a roof over our heads. I support Jessica's project. We need in Nashville affordable housing for single mothers like myself. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brenda Ross, and I live at 813 Stockholm Street, and I think I've been there over 30 years. I am a community activist, and it took uh, several conversations, and I don't get up 830 in the morning to have conversations, but I met with Jessica for several uh, weeks about her project. I even visited her site. Uh, I'm in strong support of her program. Uh, there's other things that our community need in looking at her pro project, and I wanted to make sure. I talked with several residents and have been meeting with some of the residents from District 1, 2, and 3 in terms of looking at the traffic from going over uh, Trinity Lane. And I think her project fits into some of the needs that we have. Uh, we're looking at a lot of projects on Dick Dickerson Road. I continue to go to community meetings for over the last 10 to 20 years. And this is a project that I welcome. I welcome a few more holes that are affordable in our district. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else uh, in support? Okay, those in opposition, if you would like to speak, if you would come up to the microphone. You can uh, state your name and address. Good evening, Council. My name is Danny Pratt. I live at 342 Edith Avenue. It's directly south of the properties in question, 1804 and 1806 Lishy. Um, I own three, 342 Edith Avenue along with my parents. Um, I'd like to respectfully encourage you to vote against the rezoning request for 1804 and 1806 Lishy, uh, which was disapproved by Metro Planning Commission. The rezone from RS5 to RM20 and the possibility of high-density housing on the property would have a significant negative impact on the quality of 342 Edith Avenue as a single-family home. We purchased 342 with the intent of living there for many years to come. And a major selling point was that it's a quiet, single-family neighborhood. My initial concern with rezoning to RM20 is the density. Our neighborhood was not developed to support that quantity of development. Uh, 342 Edith and 1804 Lishy were built in 1930 at a time when setbacks, structure, location, and land use were not a consideration as, as they are now. My home sits a mere five feet from the property line with 1804 Lishy. The placement of my house on the lot, while not my decision, would negatively affect my property's value, as well as my enjoyment and comfort if significant construction at 1804 and 1806 Lishy takes place. Uh, the developer has expressed multiple times that they intend to build a maximum 46 units on the 2.3 acres of land. I understand the need for additional and affordable homes in Nashville, but I do not believe this density is the answer for our neighborhood. 
I'm also fearful of the congestion and traffic inherent to high density zoning. An influx of people of that magnitude would bring increased noise and foot traffic around my home. The inevitable noise of construction, more vehicles and more people would be an immediate detriment to my livelihood as well, as much of my income as a musician is made recording and rehearsing in my home at 342 Edith. In addition, there has been no proposed utility infrastructure. My chief concern is water and sewage, which are already a problem in our neighborhood. On my property, standing water accumulates in my yard and my basement after rain, primarily from water runoff directly from 1804 Lishy. A large-scale development at 1804 and 1806 Lishy would, in <coughs> excuse me, would inevitably lead to further water drainage problems on my property. Uh, Along with that, uh, there are many native plants and trees which play host to a multitude of wildlife on my property and at 1804 and 1806 Lishi, including some federally protected birds. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Good evening. Sorry, I'm just a little nervous. That's okay. Uh, just uh, if you could give me your name and address. Yes. Marie Robertson, and I reside at 342, sorry, Edith Avenue with my partner, Danny. 46 units, 46 units on 2.3 acres of land would completely change the environment of the neighborhood. As a resident, that would greatly impact, um, I would be, that would be greatly impacted and to see that density in this area. We understand the need for additional and affordable housing, but this proposal does not consider those already invested in and a part of the community. Thank you for your service, and tonight th I request that you vote against the rezoning for these properties to protect the long-term future of the neighborhood. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening. My name is Gordon Stacy Harmon. I reside at 1826 Joy Circle. My home is roughly two-tenths of a mile from this property in question. But I'm here tonight to add my voice of opposition on behalf of my neighbor, Danny and Marie. Their home at 342 Edith Avenue is exactly five feet from the southern property line of 1804 Lishy. I dare say any of the other people that have spoken tonight live this close to that project. The owners of the property in question have expressed their plan to build 46 units on this 2.3 acres of land. To say this project will impact Danny and his fiance, his enjoyment of the property, and the ability to use the property as he does presently, well, that's an understatement. Imagine, if you will, that you look out your bedroom window to see cars driving past your window that close to your house. Imagine the loss of privacy knowing that you'll have to effectively close off any windows and discontinue use of your back door. Imagine having to deal with construction noise and then subsequent noise from having this many people homes and cars where you have none now. Then consider the anticipated stormwater runoff that all these buildings and pavement will cause. The home as it sits now experiences minor flooding during any significant rainfall. Add to that all the new water runoff in his basement and yard will be practically useless. Finally, consider the heat island that this cluster of buildings and pavement will become. The space required to construct these buildings, the required parking access drives, leaves little to no green space. There will be no room for trees, such as the old growth trees that exist there now. To say that this is an ill-advised density for this lot is yet another understatement. Based on our recently adopted neighborhood plan, developments of this size should only be appropriate if they significantly contribute to the alley network and provide additional access to nearby roads. Not the sole connection to Lishy that the owners will have to supply for their anticipated residents. Just because a sub-district is entitled to be rezoned to that particular density does not mean that RM20 should apply to every property in that sub-district. This property is mid-block, incredibly deep with only 242 street of foot, uh, feet of street frontage, and it sits across from and next to multiple single-family homes. While that property immediately to the north was approved for an SP, no development has occurred. In fact, that property is for sale currently. To date, the spokesperson for this development has attended a neighborhood meeting as well as a couple of our steering committee meetings. Neighbors have expressed significant objection to this particular proposal. Planning staff recommended disapproval of the RM20 application, even recommended an SP to address these concerns. Planning Commission took that recommendation and disapproved this 
project earlier this year. Even though all these people, neighbors, staff, and commission are against the project, the spokesperson and those she represent have refused to compromise. They are insistent that they are going to build 46 units to maximize their investment, yet they've shown no concern for the investment people like Mr. Pratt made when he purchased this home three and a half years ago. I urge you to set aside councilmanic courtesy. Really look at this property and the impact it can have, specifically to our neighborhood as well as Mr. Pratt's property. We urge the Planning and Zoning Committee to review this situation and vote to disapprove. And when it comes to third reading and final vote, I hope you do likewise and deny this bill. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Sean Parker. I live at 108 Manette Court, which is about a five-minute walk from this property. Um, I wanted to raise a specific concern. Um, I share the um, desire for more housing options and affordable housing in this community. Um, I think between the 2013 and 2017 assessment periods, our valuation went up like 96 percent, like things have been skyrocketing in the area. Um, what I'm concerned about is that most of the new multifamily construction, um, I'm not sure if it's most, it's much. I've looked quite a bit at the parcel viewer and the STR permit tracker map, but an awful lot of it is being purchased by hotel investors to run STR properties. And this is an issue with every high density multifamily zoning code we have, unfortunately. Um, but I would say if this policy change is for the sake of affordable housing, um, that we restrict that land use through an SP. Um, I think that that's going to keep us from putting working people in the same arena as hotel investors when they're trying to buy a home. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Devin McPherson. I rent a house at 1431 Lishy Avenue, and I sit on the steering committee of Highland Heights Neighbors. I wanted to voice one specific concern. I'm not entirely in opposition to this proposal. I think a lot of it makes sense. My specific concern echoes what the gentleman before me said about the proposal for non-owner-occupied STRPs, which I own several of. I'm also a part of several real estate national groups with people who, every time a new development comes around where there's potential for non-owner occupied STRPs, there are dozens of people just clamoring to get a hold of them. And I can tell you that if this goes through without an SP that would prohibit non-owner STRPs, every single one's going to get bought up, not by people looking for affordable housing. Those people are going to be outbid. It's happening all over the town. And I can tell you because I own several of them. And I would probably buy one just to get in on the game. I can tell you with 100% certainty also that every single parcel on this neighborhood is not falling apart like some gentleman before me said that this neighborhood has been forgotten. There are million dollar houses on this street. The Average house on this street looks significantly better than the regular ones in East Nashville. And I've had a house on this street for about 10 years. So I can say from experience that I have watched this specific neighborhood dramatically change. Furthermore, across the street, some of the other developers who spoke tonight spoke in favor of other projects that were passed and now sit standing still because building costs have gone too high for them to adequately profit off of the construction. That being said, Jessica Williams said at the last steering committee meeting that too much time has passed, quote unquote, to be able to guarantee that these units would remain affordable. I would propose that you reject this, but ask that they come back with an SP that says no non-owner occupied STRP is so that we can guarantee that all of the gentlemen and women who spoke so adamantly before me about the need for affordable housing can get their wish. Because if they don't and you approve this bill, it's all going to go to people like me who buy them up and rent them out to people. I promise you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Davis. I'd like to thank everybody that came out in support and everyone who came out in opposition and just want to thank everybody for coming out and speaking. Um, I'd like to close the public hearing, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval on second with an explanation, please. All right, so I got a motion to approve on second, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member.
There's something I do want to clear up real quickly. Planning staff has worked very hard on this. And for or against, I don't, I, I just want everybody to know that planning has worked with us on this. And I want to clear that up first of all. Second part is the alley situation. This is a weird situation because to the north of her, now I may have my directions mixed up, but right next to her, it's, I think it's to the north of her or the south of her, um, the Rochford group had a project approved for way more units, even though they had eight acres. Part of the issue with put her putting the alley in, she has to get permission from her co a competitor, which is going to make that difficult. Now, lastly, what I want to address on third with a substitute is restricting some Airbnb um, because we want this to be for affordable. We want to bring those neighbors back who are displaced. I mean, a young lady from Jones Avenue needs a house. She can't afford to live here anymore. And so what I'm looking at is to bring a substitute to address and restricting some STRPs for this property, which I think would make us all feel a lot better. Um, and I just want to move for approval on second, and I look forward to sharing the substitute with you on third. God bless you all. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Vice Mayor, I did not seek to be recognized. I'm not sure if I accidentally pushed that in trying to um, downsize a selection on the screen. I apologize. That's, that's all right, no problem. Uh, Council Member Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, this sounds like it is coping with something that I have been concerned about for a while here in Nashville. This is a beautiful city, I love this city, but I was concerned about the, the housing going up so much that people who lived here wouldn't be, afford to be able to afford to live here or those who have owned houses for a long time wouldn't be able to um, keep those houses. This sounds like this is a good match to help with some of that. Um, and after I think hearing my uh, fellow councilman say that he's doing something to restrict uh, non-occupant uh, uses of this because that was very surprising to hear what that other gentleman said and I don't want to see people just um, coming and for the wrong reason and buying up and then having wild parties and stuff there. So I'm glad that you're looking to do something there. But I, I am interested, interested to ask you because I did hear everybody speaking about how many of your speakers, because I heard them there from different areas, but how many of your speakers tonight um, actually live near that area? Council Member Davis. Now, it's on the, um, now I may be off a couple numbers. Now, on the um, pro side, there was about five. On the no side, all of them live in my district on the um, anti side. Um, but the point is, there's been a lot of talk. This, this has gained citywide attention, and not the neighbors that came here in opposition or in support, but we have a few neighbors that really got animated. And that's why the whole East Nashville, North Nashville community came out as a whole and supported Jessica, because there were some people, and they said, it's council matter cursed, don't do that. So, so people from all your district, everyone else's district came out who are supporting this project. And, and that's what they were trying to really show, that there is a need for affordability. Jessica has been on the front lines um, fighting for this. And what, what I'm reading here is once we, on third, put in the restrictions for the SCRPs, I think it's going to be a good step forward in the right direction. And so um, thank you for your time, council members. And, uh, move for approval on second. All right. Thank you, Council, council Member Lee. Any follow up? Okay. Uh, council Member Bedney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So I'm very thankful to everybody that came to advocate for affordable housing. That is an extremely important thing. So I really appreciate you all. Uh, we need more voices like yours uh, to remind Nashville that we have a crisis in our hands and that we need to take steps to take care of it. Uh, unfortunately, the state preempted placing conditions on zoning uh, to make affordable housing. So I just don't want them to be disappointed when they find out that we cannot actually force 
a developer to build affordable housing. So what I wanted to ask uh, Council Member Davis is first, they don't want some restriction to short-term rental. They want total restriction to short-term because they want all the units to be affordable. And second of all, what are you going to do? Uh, how are you going to be able to, uh, and you don't have to answer now, I will need to know that for third reading to honor the request. They came all the way here today asking for that. We need to make sure they get what they came to ask, and I hope that uh, we can make that happen, or I won't be able to vote for it, because I want to respect the people that came here today. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Davis, you want to respond? One tool, I'm not 100% sure, okay? So please don't hold me to the fire with this one. I know on past bills, just like the one off of Oakwood, which was disapproved, which created um, over 300 units of real affordable housing with three bedrooms selling, um, being rented out for $900 a month for a three bedroom, two bath here in Nashville. Um, what we did was we attached a AMI uh, requirements um, to that bill as well, which helped restrict that. Now, I don't know if we can do it now. It's a talk with Mr. Jameson and some of the planning staffers. And so I'll be attempting to do that. I've done it in the past, and I don't want us to get dinged and beat up by the state. But I know we can somehow put there um, AMI, like 90%, 80% AMI, which helps the build be more affordable. But that's something that, that, that is a possibility if we're going to be allowed to do it this time. I've, I've gotten away with it before, but I don't know. The state is funny these days. All right, thank you. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And I, I definitely appreciate everyone who came out today, and I always appreciate hearing from the faith community, uh, in particular, who advocates quite a bit for affordable housing. Um, um, my colleague, uh, in speaking with, having gotten away with things before, I mean, that, that's just kind of it for me, is that I have supported so many disapproved bills in District 5. I've supported so many of them, and I've worked so much with my colleague, whom I greatly admire and respect, and we have different approaches, but we work together too. I'm just at that point where I'm done with the disapproved bills. I'm just done with the disapproved bills. If you're gonna bring a plan that has affordable housing, put together a plan that has affordable housing, has some guarantees in it, has a site plan, has infrastructure, you know how to do that because you've done that in other projects. Other council members know how to do that too and work with the planning department. Everyone is here to help you do that. And for this great vision that all these people came here today with about having more housing units, which we need, more supply, which we need, like we know how to do that in this body and you know how to do that. And so I am voting no on this today on second. It's a little bit, I, I'm putting the brakes on disapproved bills. Um, with all due respect, I've just win with you so much, but I'm voting no on this today. I'm always willing to consider, reconsider on third, but I'm just tired of we approve something on second, then it goes to third, then there's a deferral, then there's an amendment and a substitute. Like, I just need a clear process. We know how to do this, you know how to do this. So let's take that vision that the folks came out here tonight and advocated for, and let's make that happen because we know how to do that, but this isn't it. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I a couple questions of planning because I think we are having a process uh, discussion. Uh, planning on a base rezone, is there the potential for restricting any use success for your primary? No. So in that scenario, a restriction of short-term rentals of any kind would not be possible, is that correct? Not on an RM20. I mean, essentially, if a, pro if a property is rezoned to a base zone of RM20, then that becomes the zoning and building permits would be issued based thereon. And so any restrictions as to use would be, have to be through an SP. And if there were a regulatory SP on this property that used the base, that used the fallback zoning as this RM20, could uses then be restricted through that process? Yes, um, if there was a regulatory SP, if it was converted to a regulatory SP, there could be um, uses um, excluded. And generally speaking, does a regulatory SP provide more flexibility than an SP? Um, 
generally, I mean, there are different types of regulatory SPs, but I would say generally it does. There would not be any, um, it depends on what's written into the regulatory SP. If it's just simply an SP that says it's RM20 for bulk, for standards, for uses, excluding ABC, then that's one thing. There are some regulatory that also include requirements for certain height restrictions um, that are different than what the base zoning is, and so it, it really depends on, on what all is included within the SP. It's generally more flexible than a site plan-based SP. So a, a regulatory SP could be written in which the only restriction were a particular use? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member, Council Member Hager. You know, I think everybody forgot that when I passed Bill 608, we stayed here until three o'clock in the morning, Planning Commission here at the Council and everything else to restrict non-owner occupied STRs in these neighborhoods. And I supported Councilman Davis on a lot of things that were disapproved by planning but I'm sorry, I cannot support this without it being an SP that restricts non-owner occupied STRs, period. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I really wasn't gonna speak tonight. I was gonna do a little bit more homework um, and speak on, on third reading if I felt necessary. But um, as you know, my father had a stroke about three years ago this past week. And so since then, I've slowly needed to take over his uh, financial responsibilities and figuring out Social Security and all sorts of these things that we hear from many of our aging residents in Davidson County. And he actually has property three or four blocks down from this site. And I emailed planning today when I saw it on Development Tracker, not realizing it was up on, on public hearing tonight, um, and assumed it was an SP because of of where it was and how many other SPs have been around here. And I've got to tell you, something that I have seen and realized is, you know, what the property that my family owns is, is probably, it, I was out cleaning my contacts, so I missed some of the pro comments, but we're probably the houses that don't look great on the street because we are able to keep those at affordable rates for rental units. Um, and every time these properties are rezoned around affordable units like this and affordable properties like like what we have we I can't tell you how many postcards we get from predatory developers who who see my father's age and think that they can send us these lowball offers um, and if they're doing it to him they're doing it to other residents and we all know that because we hear about it from across the district and again I wasn't going to speak tonight but I was so moved by the young couple that honestly these are areas that that could be affordable, that were affordable, and when we continue to approve, disapprove bills like this, that they just completely upzone the area, we're tearing away the fiber of the neighborhood that makes it great or that makes it affordable. Um, and all it does is it increases the value of the other properties and encourages other property owners not to keep their rents affordable and not to keep to sell affordable. Um, and so again, sorry to be on my soapbox tonight, wasn't planning to speak, but I was. I was really moved by the young couple who, I mean, it's, it's, it's things we've got to consider about um, and, and we can't just continue to let um, Nashville grow out of control without the restrictions that can be guaranteed in an SP. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Hart. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I too uh, did not plan to speak and I felt quite a bit of passion. And I do understand, but I work in a neighborhood where I've seen this same thing come and happen to neighborhoods. Monroe, Ninth Avenue, every five minutes there's some type of shatter uh, or shutter that takes place for demolition. Neighborhoods have been disrupted. It's too late for us to stop what's going on. It's already done. My question is to planning, and I want to know, did they offer some recommendation to the developer on what 
could be done in order to accommodate the development, as opposed to saying what cannot be done. Certainly, this is a project that has been in the pipeline for um, quite some time, and planning staff uh, worked with the developer um, to try to come up with an SP plan that could be something that would be supported. Um, the, the neighborhood plan that was adopted, the Highland Heights study, has some pretty specific guidelines that was based on a lot of community input from folks in that neighborhood. Um, and so a lot of that input was taken into consideration um, in order to try to get a plan that could be approved. Um, they drew up a couple of um, potential SPs, um, and then ultimately the developer, the applicant chose to back away from that and focus on the, um, the rezoning request as, as submitted. So um, my question now is to the councilman. Um, what is it that you recommend in order to accommodate the development that's being requested. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council at Large, um, Sharon Hurt. Let's just talk about this for a second. I know we got a long night in front of us, but, you know, people have addressed, I have to address my colleagues. That's fine. All right. Number one, this young lady's been working on this plan for two and a half years. Yes, planning department has been working with it. What has happened has been difficult because where the alley needs to be built, there's another parcel, a large parcel owned by another development group, which makes it very hard for her to put that alley and do other things, which is one of the reasons why we had some difficulty with this. And the other development group, not trying to call them out on the carpet, you know, we're not being cooperative because they're two competing interests. You know, their SP was approved through the planning department, through the commission, through this council. And by those, by those two large SPs being boxing her in, I, I was just going to say it, they did not want to work with her. In fact, they were wanting to buy the property from her. And part of the reason why, you know, all due respect, I love you, Mr. Withers, you're a great guy. But the reason why this didn't come back a detailed plan, the policy has been changed twice, it almost got changed a third time, but you know, that didn't happen. Ever since this young lady's been working on this development, the policy has been changed twice. So it kept slowing her down too. And the policy tried to be changed a third time, but you know, it didn't make it through. And now we're here, and that's another reason why this has been taking so long. And another thing I want to address, you know, yes, I have, the most disapproved bills, but I also have over 300 approved bills too. So let's look at the batting average here. Um, at the end of my term, I'll probably be looking at 17 disapproved bills, maybe 18. And you want to compare that to 320 bills that were approved. Um, I'm basically, I'm basically, basically kind of like some Michael Jordan stats there, but All right. but that's what I want to address and. We're gonna we're gonna bring we're gonna we're gonna do a non we're gonna bring a a non-regulatory SP to address those issues with the um, short-term rentals, and also I'm gonna work again with Bob to figure out a way to get some affordability language so that the state that the state didn't so he helped. last time we did it for the Oakwood Commons it went through and those units are being sold and built affordable and so. Let me go back to Council Member Hart, because her, her time is up, but I'd like for you to be able to finish up. So I, I thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, and I thank the council member for the hard work, and I thank all of those that actually came out uh, to give their uh, position on this. And I um, did hear in all of the um, comments that have been made that it seems that decisions are made and changed to accommodate who uh, many that they want to accommodate. So I stand in support of this and I'm very happy to hear that the councilman is willing to make some adjustments that will be more in line with uh, in compliance. All right, thank you, council member. Council member Swope. Call the question. Previous question has been called. We are voting on the previous question. 
All in favor of the previous question, vote aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, previous question prevails. Uh, we are uh, voting on uh, BL 2019-1569 by Council Member Scott Davis. Uh, this is a motion to approve on public hearing. Um, because there are negative votes, we are going to have to be on the board. So, Madam Clerk, if you will um, open up the machine so that the members can vote. Again, we are voting on uh, BL 2019-1569 by Council Member Scott Davis. Um, we're waiting on, um, there we go. Okay, after all these times, Council Member Pardue has learned how to use that stick. All right, um, looks like everybody's voted. Um, Madam Clerk, if you will um, close the machine, take the vote. There we go. 22 in favor, seven against, six abstentions. Okay, so 22 yeses, seven no, six abstentions, four not voting. Uh, the measure passes on second reading. Remember, um, it will need 27 votes because it's a disapproved bill on third reading, but it goes on. All right, uh, we are now ready for BL 2019 1570 by Council Member Hager. This Thank was. You. This was disapproved as submitted, approved with a substitute by the Planning Commission 7 to 0. Uh, changes 40.14 acres from R8 to RS 7.5. Zoning for various properties located along Old Hickory Boulevard from 6th Street to Butler's Lane because there's a proposed substitute. We don't, not, we don't need to see any slides. You recognize right. Council Member Hager. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. And clear the public hearing open. See a show of hands of those here in support of this measure. All right, a show of hands of those who are here not in support, of, in opposition of this measure. Council Member Hager, do you see anybody back there? Okay, so, uh, so seeing none in, op wait a minute, do I have somebody with a hand up? Uh, okay, seeing nobody in uh, opposition, uh, would those in support wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Hager, you're recognized. I need to move the substitute first, please. Okay, so uh, there's a motion on the substitute, properly seconded, back to you for an explanation of the substitute. Substitute, what this is, um, this particular area has the R zoning in it, and what was occurring were these lots um, are about, um, they're 50 by, 50 by 150 foot lots. Uh, they were starting to put two houses on each of these lots, especially the ones right there on Ogier Boulevard. There's just not enough space. And we had a community meeting about it. I had a petition signed by a lot of people, and they all agreed to go to the RS 7.5 uh, to stop the uh, building of two houses on one lot. The substitute for the properties that already had duplexes on them and the properties that people were already vested in those people were being exempted out because they were already invested in the property or they already had permits uh, to build uh, what, what they were gonna build there. So that's what the substitute does. It exempts those particular people out because they were already vested. So I'm asking for support of that, please. All right, so I got a motion on the substitute. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the substitute is now uh, approved. Uh, Council Member Hager, you're on your bill as substituted. Move the pass the bill as substituted. So I got Vice a motion Mayor. to approve the bill as substituted. We're on 2019-1570. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Uh, BL 2019-1571 by Council Member Hager, approved by the Planning Commission 10-0 on 425 2018 applies the contextual overlay district to 39.74 acres for various properties located along Old Hickory Boulevard from 6th Street to Butler's Lane. Council Member Hager, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. All right, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing none in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Hager, you're recognized. This is the same area as BL 2019-1570. This puts a contextual overlay in this area. Most of these houses are uh, single family, uh, uh, one level homes and what the contextual overlay do will protect those houses and keep them in context with that neighborhood. So I ask the council support in passing this, please. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, council member. Uh, it's been moved, properly seconded. We are on BL 2019-1571. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, thank, you. thank you, council member Hager. BL 2019-1572 by council member Vircher. Uh, this was approved contingent upon joint adoption, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 90 on 328 2019. Mints 4.78 acres of a plan unit development for properties located at 301 South Perimeter Park Drive and 347 Luna Drive. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Do you want me to go ahead and move the substitute or open the public hearing? Why don't we go do the public hearing first and then, uh, then we can do the substitute. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of those here in support of the measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing none, would you like to speak? Those in favor? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the substitute. Okay, so I got a motion on the substitute properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the substitute. Basically just cleans up um, some language at the recommendation of the of the Planning Commission as it relates to um, amending this PUD on this property. Um, there's been community meeting, a, a community meeting was held as it relates to this. Um, neighbors expressed some concern that um, uh, the access was going to be on Luna Drive and I uh, just want to make sure that I'm publicly stating um, that the access will not be on, on Luna Drive. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to move for approval. Okay, so I got a motion um, on the, this is the substitute. Yes. Uh, again, it's been properly seconded. Okay. I've lost my director of the council for just a moment. <laughs> I think he went to go get a piece of pizza. Uh, he should be right back. So ladies and gentlemen in the back, sometimes we uh, take just a quick break. Um, we appreciate everybody being here. It's 8.15, we are on page um, three of the calendar. Okay. We could blame it on Councilman Davis. Okay. All right, so we are on BL 2019-1572 by Council Member Virtue. Uh, we're on a motion to approve the substitute properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. No, I apologize, Mr. President. I was going to see if uh, Council Member Bedney had any jokes during the break, but now that we're back, uh, I'm out of, I'm probably out of turn and out of order. You are out of order, and fortunately for you, we are out of order. All right, so back to uh, Council Member Virtue. We're back on the substitute properly seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we're voting on the substitute. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, substitute is adopted. Council Member Vircher, you're on your bill as substituted. I move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, well, you adopted 2019-1572 on second reading. Bill 2019-1573, uh, Council Member Vircher, 
this was approved contingent upon joint adoption, disapproved with that by the Planning Commission 90 on 328 2019. Changes 4.78 acres from CS and R10 to OG zoning for properties located at 347 Luna Drive and 301 South Perimeter Park Drive. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those here in support of this measure. Okay, thank you. Show of hands of those people here who are in opposition to this measure. Seeing none, uh, those in favor wish to speak. He doesn't oh, okay. wish to speak, Vice Mayor. Okay, no, so I thought people were coming up to the microphone. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Virtue, you're recognized. I move for approval. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? We're on 2019-1573. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, 1573 is adopted on second reading. Uh, BL 2019-1574 by Councilmember Haywood and Hall. Approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on 228 2019. Council's 4.04 acres of a planned unit development for property located at 4237 Little Mirabone Road. Councilmember Haywood, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All right. Uh, we're on 1574. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those here who are in favor of this measure. Right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Hayward, you're recognized. Based on no opposition and obviously those that approve, I'd like to move for approval. Got, got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt 2019-1574. Uh, BL 2019-1575 by Council Member Sledge, approved with conditions, disapproved without, by the Planning Commission 90 on 314 2019 This changes 3.14 acres from IWD to SP for property located at 900, 904, 910A, 914, and 916 8th Avenue South, and 901, 909, 911, 913, 915, 917, 919, 921, 923, and 925 Bass Street to permit a mixed use development. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Please open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those here who are in favor of this um, matter. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing none in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move an amendment from the packet. All right, so I've got a uh, motion to amend this measure, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. A brief explanation. It outlaws short-term rental usage and automobile usage, and I'd ask for council support. All right, you've heard the amendment. Again, it's been properly okay. seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. You're back on your bill as amendment. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move as amended. All right. So I got a motion to uh, um, to approve BL 2019-1575 as amended. Any discussion? It's properly seconded. Any discussion on the measure? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, BL 2019-1576. Council Member Weiner, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 90 on 314 2019, amends 4.07 acres of the existing SP zoning for property located at 730 Old Hickory Boulevard to permit up to 48 multifamily residential units and add an excess access and public utility easement. Uh, Council Member Weiner, I'm looking at Council Member Bedney. Uh, I open the public hearing. Councilmember Bedney, we are checking. Did you sign on to this bill? I'm the planning chair. I usually sign on the bills. Okay. I don't recall. Uh, We're just double checking, so we make sure we I'm do this. I'm a prolific right. signer, uh, Vice Mayor. <coughs> we appreciate the fact that you sign on to almost everything, but we're just double checking. I really like my signature. I know you do. Okay. 
So you're going to get ready to have a chance to sign this again. Oh, Joy, somebody wants to take a picture? Yeah. No? I don't see anybody raising their hand. It's a special moment. No. Can we open the public hearing in the meantime? Yep. Uh, B, we're on BL 2019-1576. Declare the public hearing open. Uh, all those, uh, let me see a show of hands of all those in favor of 1576. All right, see some hands in the back. Show of hands here who are in opposition to BL 2019-1576. Seeing none, I declare, uh, would those in favor wish to speak? Don't see anybody coming up. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member uh, Wiener, you're recognized. There you go. I'd like to move the bill for acceptance, please. All right, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, BL 2019-1577 by Council Member Blaylock. Approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on 228-2019. Changes 1.15 acres from R6 and CS to RM15A zoning for properties located at 4409 JJ Watson Avenue and a portion of 4415 Nolansville Pike. Council Member Blaylock, you're recognized. Thank you. We still have a little bit of work to do on this, so I do want to defer this one meeting, please. All right. So the motion is to defer one meet. Uh, you have to defer, because it's public hearing, defer to the first meeting in July. That's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. So the motion is to defer to the first meeting in July, properly seconded. Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? No. Uh, the motion is adopted. <laughs> BL 2019-1578 by Council Member Sledge. Approve with conditions, disapprove without. By the Planning Commission 90 on 314 2019 Changes 2.89 acres from IR to SP zoning for property located at 520 Hagen Street and 640 Merritt Avenue to permit a mixed unit development. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Please open the public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here who are in favor of this measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing none, would those in favor wish to speak? Don't see anybody coming up. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move an amendment on this one as well. All right, so there's a motion to uh, amend 1578, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This also uh, takes out any short term rental uses as well as auto uses. I would ask for approval. All right, so I got a motion and a second on the amendment. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. You're back on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move for approval as amended. Okay, motion to approve as amended, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, BL 2019-1579 by Council Member Scott Davis. Approved by the Planning Commission 7 to 0 on 228-2019. Changes 1.59 acres from MULA to MUGA zoning for a portion of property located at 1404 Dickerson Pike. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing none, would those in favor wish to speak? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Move for approval, please. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Yeah. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1580 by Council Member Kendall. So approved by the Planning Commission 9 to 0 on 314-2019, changes 0.31 acres from CS to MULA zoning for property located at 900 Buchanan Street. Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing no one in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Kendall, you're recognized. Move approval. Okay, motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. 
Bill 2019-1581 by Council Member Swope, approved by the Planning Commission 10 to 0 on 425-2019, applies 812.34 acres of a corridor design overlay district to various properties located along Nolansville Pike, southward, southward from Zoo Road to the south side of Burkett Road. Council Member Swope, you are recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. Move to open the public hearing, please. All right. I declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Show of hands of the, those who are here in opposition to the measure. Okay, got one in opposition. Uh, would you like to speak? There's nobody in favor. Would you like to speak in opposition? Sure. If so, if you will come up to the uh, podium, uh, give us your name and address. You got three minutes. My name is Paul Turner. I live at 527 Whispering Hills Drive. Uh, neighbors, not only in Whispering Hills, but going down Blackman and so forth. We've been trying to understand a little bit more about this. I, I understand there was even a map, and there's been back and forth discussions about, for instance, going from single residence to multiple residence on a property if you had a half an acre or more. We're trying to get a better understanding of what the overall plan is. Overlay was not definitive enough. Um, I believe it's uh, Devet Blaylock, is that correct? Uh, there was been some discussions that there were some messages sent there and basically we're we just like a little more information if we could uh, Right now I have approximately one acre and of course I have lots of wildlife that come through even in the evening I even have a, a coyote or two that come through my yard and uh, Just want to understand what this entails. I've tried to do a lot of reading on understanding all the various zonings according to Metro and uh, if we could get a little more understanding of the overall plan, that would greatly help. Thank you. All right, thank you. Can you, can you recommend where I can find that? Obviously, well, I'm gonna, we're gonna close the public hearing. I'm okay. gonna turn it over to the council member and uh, for uh, some comments. Anybody else wishing to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council member Swope, you are recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. And sir, if when we're done here tonight, not at 3 a.m. in the morning, but as soon as we're done with this particular piece of legislation, he shall meet me right outside. I'll have a private conversation with you. Thanks. But publicly, let me state that this is between Councilman Elrod, Blaylock, Bednay, myself, Mr. Potts, uh, I think that's it. It covers a whole big stretch of Nolensville Road, and what this is meant to do, and what it's only meant to do, is set a contextual backdrop for what can and can't be done along that stretch of road from zoo the whole way down to basically the Williamson County line. In other words, no strip clubs, no after hours bars, no used car lots, things like that. Um, it also sets very, very broad parameters of how you can build. In other words, we don't want stick frame houses going up there. We want decent housing going up there. We don't want commercial warehouses going up. We want well-built warehouses or things that are fronted that look and, and operate within the contextual environment of the community. So with that said, and with the years of work that planning has done on this, and the five of us have done on it, I ask for your approval on second. All right, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Council Member Elrod, you're recognized. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, sir, I think you may be talking about a different ordinance that we've got. I think you may be talking about Council Member Blaylock's zoning bill. Yeah, 1581 I'll, I'll, is the one that talked about that outside. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Well, we'll happily meet with you outside. So, great. Thanks, right. thank you. Council Member, Council Member Bedney. Yeah, this is uh, really a very simple effort to have uh, a pre clear design guidelines for the corridor uh, and to improve the overall look of the strip. I know many of you have uh, applied to use it in your communities. It's, it's really a baseline for uh, future um, development, <coughs> and it doesn't impact the type of zoning you're going to get. It's just the, the look of it. So um, this is uh, really needed for us in Nolensville Road. We have some, uh, some individuals that are not very, <laughs> uh, how shall I put it? We want to encourage them to, to design better projects when they uh, decide to remodel. So with that, uh, help us improve the gateway to the city, Nolensville Road, one of the, 
the places where 30,000 trips happen every day. Let's, let's make sure we frame it nicely. Appreciate your support on this. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Swope, uh, back to you for any final comments. I just renew my motion. All right. So uh, we are on a bill of 2019-1581. Um, nobody else in the queue. We're voting on it. Uh, proper motion, proper second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. You adopt. We're on BL 2019-1582 by Council Member Hastings. Uh, this was approved with and disapproved without by the Planning Commission 6011 on 228-2019. Changes 8.72 acres from RS 7.5 to SV zoning for properties located at West Trinity Lane, unnumbered approximately 440 feet west of Brownlow Street to permit 375 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings, you're recognized. Yes, Mr. President, we'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, I'd like to see a show of hands of those here who are in favor of the measure. All right, thank you. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing none in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? I see some heads shaking no. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Hastings, you are recognized. Yes, sir, Mr. President, we'd like to move for approval. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Thank you. Now we are on BL 2019-1583, sponsors Glover. This changes 2.78 acres from RS15 to SP zoning for property located at 3049 Earhart Road to permit a single family residential structure and billboard. Council Member Glover. Thank you, Pro Tim. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Thank you. Would all those in favor please raise your hand? Thank you. Any opposed, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in favor like to speak? All right, seeing no one wishing to speak, I'll go back to you, Council Member Glover. Move approval. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1584, sponsor is O'Connell. This makes provisions of a historic preservation overlay district to 13.79 acres for various properties located along Joe Johnston Avenue from 16th Avenue North to 12th Avenue North and bordered by the CSX Railroad. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. We have uh, some more work to do on this one with area property owners, and I would like to defer this to the first meeting in July, please. Okay. We have a motion to move to the first meeting in July. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is deferred. Next is BL 2019-1585, sponsor is Sledge. This changes 0.3 acres from R6 to OR20A zoning for properties located at 747 and 749 Alloway Street. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If you open the public hearing, please. Thank you. Um, point of order. I missed, I missed a council member who wished to speak. Do you wish to speak? Um, it's been deferred, so we'll, we'll have an opportunity to speak later. I apologize. Thank you. My, my apologies. Um, Councilmember Sledge, open the public hearing. All right. We are back on BL 1585. Would all those in favor of BL 1585 please raise your hand? Thank you. Any opposed? Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no, Councilmember Sledge. Uh, move approval. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? You, you recommend? Next is BL 2019-1587. Sponsor is Scott Davis. Changes five, for, excuse me, uh, Council Member Sledge has two. Back to you, Council Member Sledge. 2019-1586 changes 0 0.74 acres from IWD to MUGA zoning for property located at 1009 8th Avenue South. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd ask you to open the public hearing. Okay. All those in favor of BL 2019-1586, please raise your hand. Thank you. Anyone in opposition? Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing none who wish to speak, I will close the public hearing. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move approval. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Any opposed? 
Bill is recommended. Now we are on BL 2019-1587. Sponsor is Scott Davis. Changes 4.54 acres from CS to RS5 and RS5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1330, 1326 Dickerson Pike, Elmhurst Pike, unnumbered, and 136, 138 Elmhurst Pike to permit a maximum of 221 multifamily residential units. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you. Um, sorry, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to open public hearing, please. Okay. Would all those in favor of the bill please raise your hand? Thank you. Any opposed? Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I will close the public hearing. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to move for approval, please. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Any opposed? You recommend. Next is BL 2019-1588. Sponsor is Hastings. This changes 1.16 acres from OR20 and RS7.5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1609 and 1613 Hampton Street, 2414 and 2416 Brick Church Pike and Hampton Street unnumbered, approximately 240 feet north of Avondale Circle to permit 37 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to open the public hearing. All right, we will open the public hearing. Would those in favor please raise your hand? <coughs> those in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no hands in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I will close the public hearing. Council Member Hastings. Madam Chair, would like to move for approval. Do you have a substitute you would like to move? Yes, I do yes, have a do. substitute. <laughs> I would like to approve. I'll move. Would yes. you like Mr. Jameson? Yes, to Mr. Jameson. Substitute? Thank you. Whoops. Substitute just adds some conditions with respect to height restrictions, three stories within 35 feet, elevations for all facades being required, and also depiction of the required public sidewalks and other, infra and other infrastructure. Okay. All so right. We have Thank a substitute. Do we have a second? All those in favor of the substitute? Any opposed? Substitute is passed. Councilmember Hastings. Thank you. Would like to move for the, for the approval. Move bill as substituted. Do we have a second? All right, we are voting on the bill as substituted. All those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1589. Sponsors Hastings changes 0.85 acres from RS 7.5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1600, 1602, 1606, and 1616 Hampton Street and 1200 Avondale Circle to permit 10 multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings. Thanks again, Madam Chair. We'd like to open the public hearing. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Any opposed, please raise your hand. Seeing no hands in opposition, would those in favor like to speak? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I will close the public hearing. Council Member Hastings. Yes, Madam Chair, we'd like to uh, move for approval. Would you like to move a substitute? Uh, yes, ma'am. I would like to move a substitute. Okay. I haven't gotten to that one yet. Okay, do we have a substitute on this one? I'm sorry, it's it's listed with the wrong one. So you don't have to move a substitute. Thank you very much. Would you like much. to move for approval? I would like to move for approval, Madam Chair. Do we have a second? Good, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Seeing none, bill is recommended. Next, next is BL 2019-1519. Sponsor is Hastings, changes 2.9 acres from RS 7.5 and CL to SP zoning for properties located at 1241 North Avondale Circle and 2422 Brick Church Pike to permit 25 multifamily residential units. Councilmember Hastings. All right, Madam Chair, we'd like to move for approval. I believe will I open the public hearing? Okay. Uh. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Any in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I close the public hearing. Council Member Hastings. Would like to have an amendment? Substitute. On, substitute on this one? Thank you. Thank you. Would you like Mr. Jameson? Yes, Mr. Jameson to help with the substitute. Substitute just applies some conditions including height restriction to 35 feet within three stories and other regulatory SP restrictions. Great. Would like to move the substitute? Do we have a second? Been moved and seconded. All those uh, wishing to speak, Council Member Johnson. Thank you. Uh, it just brought 
to my attention, my seatmate. Uh, it, my printout says, uh, BL 2019-1590 says, refer to the planning commission, not planning committee. So could you speak to that? Is, it, is there a public hearing already at the planning commission? Um, I would like Mr. Jameson, my, my version says approved by planning commission, so. Correct. Yeah, ours says refer to. Can someone verify which we should be believing? This was approved March 28, 2019 by the Planning Commission. I believe the, there may be an error with respect to the second line on the agenda, but it has been according to the website approved. I'll defer to the planning table to confirm approval March 28th of 2019. Can we get confirmation from the planning table, yes, please? Yes. The, the, the project was approved, was recommended for approval with conditions and disapproval without all conditions by the Planning Commission unanimously on March 28th, 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1591. Sponsor is Sledge. This changes 2.24 acres from R8 to SP zoning for property located at 944, 945 South Douglas Avenue to permit 19 residential units. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Defer to the first meeting in July, please. Okay. Been seconded. All those in favor? Any opposed? To July. Bill is deferred. Next is BL 2019-1592. Sponsor is Scott Davis. Changes 0.84 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for properties located at 343, 345, and 347 Edwin Street. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. Um, open the public hearing, please. All right. I'm open the public hearing. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Thank you. Any in, in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no hands in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Please come to the lectern. Good evening again. My name is Gordon Stacy Harmon. I reside at 1826 Joy Circle. I just wanted to speak in support of this particular bill. The um, Denny's are neighbors of mine, and we have talked several times about how they wanted to rezone their properties for R6 or R6A. R6A is the proper um, intensity for this particular property. It was supported by Planning Commission, and those of us in the neighborhood would also like to support R6A for this particular property. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Council Member Davis. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, move for approval, please. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. <laughs> Next is BL 2019-1593, sponsor is Kendall. Changes 0 0.3 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 2406 Albion Street. Council member Kendall, let me find you. You're recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, open the public hearing, please. Okay, would all those in favor please raise your hand? Thank you, any in opposition please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I will close the public hearing. Council Member Kendall. Move approval. Been moved and seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Any opposition? Bill is recommended. Next is BL 2019-1594, sponsors Any Davis. Expands 212.07 acres of urban zoning overlay for various properties located east of Ellington Parkway. Council Member Scott Davis. Or Council Member Scott Davis. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd open the public hearing, please. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no hands on either side, I will turn it back to you, Council Member Davis. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker. I'd like to close the public hearing with a brief explanation. Okay. So I'd like to thank my colleague, one of my good friends, Anthony Davis, and also um, Brett Withers and Nancy Van Reese for their help on, on this. And Anthony did a lot of work on this. Anthony, we appreciate you. And move for approval, please. Been moved and seconded. Councilmember O'Connell, do you wish to speak on this? You're recognized. Yes, ma Madam President, I 
just wanted to rise in support of a bill that features uh, both council members Davis as lead sponsors and congratulate them. Thank you. It is, it is a lovely symmetry. Council member Davis. Thank you. I'll just quickly say this is our UZO expansion bill and uh, long term, hopefully, said this at Planning Commission, but I think we want to get to Briley Parkway on the east side, but I think this was a good step forward with Gallatin and Trinity, and uh, thanks for planning for working on it with us and move approval. Thank you. Then moved and seconded, seeing no one else in the queue. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You adopt. Next is BL 2019-1595, sponsor is Hastings, changes 0 0.63 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 1533 Lock Road and 1605 Seminary Street to permit eight multifamily residential units. Council Member Hastings. Thank you again, Madam Chair. Would like to open the public hearing. Thank you. Would all those in favor please raise your hand? Thank you. Any opposed, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I'll close the public hearing. Council Member Hastings. Yes, Madam Chair, would like to move for approval. There's a second. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue for discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You adopt. Next is BL 2019-1596, sponsor is Scott Davis. Changes 1.63 acres from R6A to RM15A zoning for various properties located along the south side of Kingston Street, approximately 500 feet of Dickerson Pike. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice. Th I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to open public hearing, please. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Any in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I'll close the public hearing. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to move for approval, please. Sir, it's been moved and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue for discussion, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? You adopt. Next is BL 2019-1606, sponsors O'Connell, Vircher, and Bedney. This authorizes Metro to purchase certain property from the state of Tennessee located at 1818 Hermitage Avenue. Uh, Council Member O'Connell. Sorry, Madam President. Uh, I would like to open the public hearing. Okay. Would all those in favor please raise your hand? Anyone in opposition please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would those in favor wish to speak? Seeing no one approaching the lectern, I will close the public hearing. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move approval. Thank you. Did you say move for approval? I did. Okay. Sorry. Um, we do need some committee reports on this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Then okay. I it's said special. the wrong thing. Uh, yes, let us get committee reports, please. Council Member Glover. Um, all right, we'll go to Council Member Bedney and come back to Council Member Glover. Council Member Bedney. Council Member O'Connell, you shouldn't be afraid of committee reports. <laughs> we are your friend. Let's hear it. Not always, Council Member. So the, there was an in, important debate at the planning uh, committee, uh, they voted to re-refer to planning and zoning 1140 against, uh, and I'd like to make a comment afterwards if that's okay with you. Certainly. Um, Council Member Kendall, can you cover for us on education committee? This is BL 2019-1606. Uh, that we voted uh, seven, four, and zero against. Great, thank you. Okay. There was Can also an amendment. Uh, well, the amendment, yeah. Um, well, go ahead. I don't. I, I don't believe I don't there was an amendment was on an this amendment. one. So I'm back to Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, did we? We need a budget and finance as well, I believe. Um, I don't have that on mine, but that makes sense, Councilmember. But to make a merger. On 1606? I believe we had that. Yeah, we absolutely, yeah, sorry. It just was on the same line. I see it now. Council Member Vircher. This is BL 2019-1606. I apologize. No uh, problem. Madam Speaker, it's been a, a long evening. But we're reading all we're we just on. getting started. <laughs> Are we? This, this is still matters on public hearing, and this should probably be on second reading on the... Budget okay, and um, budget and finance recommended approval 12 4 0 against. Thank you. 
Okay, Council Member, and Council Member Bennett, you're gonna make your comment after Council Member speaks further. Okay, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to move to approve and to re-refer to the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee, although I would like to remind the chair of that committee of his remarks that I should be unafraid, and yet he has asked for a re-referral and intends to speak. So I, I will just see what happens now. Senior trembling in your boots. Council Member Bednick. What I'm going to say, I say with all due respect. <laughs> So uh, I think, it's, I think uh, there were a lot of um, uh, questions on the committee about uh, issues related to this uh, project. And I asked the school, the representative, the architect, to come back and talk to us. But I think, from my perspective, in a nutshell, uh, is there is an important interest in preserving the existing building. And there is a challenge to the school system to incorporate the existing building into the design of the new school. So I will, uh, I will expect them to do something to that effect. And also I think there were some uh, issues that had to do with budget, which are not really pertaining to, uh, to planning, but people wanted to see if there were other better uses for that money, but I'll leave that to the budget uh, chair to discuss. But from, from the planning perspective, I think uh, the committee want to hear uh, what efforts at all uh, the school system will do to try to incorporate the existing structure into the new building. Thanks. Thank you, and we'll, we'll have them speak at the next planning committee meeting. Um, we do have a few people in the queue. Um, I'll recognize them. Council Member Hager. Well, we, d we discussed this in planning, and my concern was, as I understand, they're wanting to purchase this for $11 million. Is that correct, Mr. Jameson? Plus three, I believe. And it is my understanding it's going to be the National School of Arts, and they've got 40 acres over there where TPS is off of Foster Avenue and Murfreesboro Road. And my question was, they're going to pay $11 million for this property, build a new school over there, and then the question was, what are you going to do with the 40 acres that you got at TPS? And they don't know yet. So I had a problem with it because... Here we are spending $11 million, then you're gonna to have to spend $110 million for a new school when you got 40 acres sitting over there at Foster Avenue and Murfreesboro Road that they don't know what they're gonna do with yet. And I asked them, I said, why can't you just put the new school there instead of spending $11 million? That's my whole problem with this situation. I'm just letting y'all know that. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Van Rees. Thank you very much. Um, there are a couple of things that concern me about this. Uh, first and uh, foremost is the historic structure. I, I would like to see a commitment to not just um, preserve uh, the building, but the actual structure. There was some comments in regard to maybe repurposing some of the stones. Uh, to me, that's, that's not what we're talking about. Um, the state of Tennessee tried to say the same kind of thing in the dismantling of the historic uh, Mason uh, buildings over on the TBI campus that we're trying to restore and save. Uh, this is the same situation. You don't have a whole lot of great old stones and repurpose them whenever the building is still usable. So if the building is still usable, I think it could be an incredible opportunity as a one of the buildings that is used by the National School School of the Arts, and I hope that um, that uh, whenever it comes back to us, that it will have um, a, a way for that to be incorporated and not just uh, dismantled in order to be incorporated. Um, I also uh, uh, took some concern over the idea that the Nashville School of the Arts had to be centrally located. I don't. I think there's a whole lot of Nashville that has to be centrally located, and I'm, I'm kind of over that. Um, I think that um, we're a countywide government, and there's lots of different places in this county. Uh, that uh, deserve to be uh, taken a uh, look at, and uh, that obviously includes um, the Northeast Corridor as well as other places. And so um, with all of these things, I think that it deserves continued discussion. Uh, all of us, you're never going to get anybody more excited about a new National School of the Arts, but I think that there's way too many factors and questions in regard to this. And um, I will be uh, abstaining on second reading, and I assume that it will come to third, and I hope for changes at that point. Thank you. Council Member Murphy. Thank you. Um, I made a number of comments earlier tonight, but I just wanted to reiterate a few. Um, Mr. Jameson, can you remind us how many pieces of property did Metro uh, schools need to sell to balance their budget this year? 
I believe there were three in proposal. So at least three pieces of property were sold in a fire sale. Keep in mind that we also had literally a fire sale in, in uh, Councilman Pulley's district, uh, selling the firehouse there. Um, this is a lot of money, and we have a, a perfectly good piece of property um, that it's on, as, as Councilman Hager pointed out, but also in my neighboring district of, of Mina Johnson's district, uh, Hillwood High School is gonna be freed up soon. And so instead of using $11 million of money to, to purchase land when we have excess land and we are selling land to balance budgets, why don't we put that 11, a little over $11 million into building the school so these students have a, a fabulous school that we're not having to scrounge around and sell other assets to build them a good school. We have land we can use. One of the justifications for buying this land was so it could be seen by the interstate. So the school could be seen by the interstate. We have land, we should use the land that we already own, stop selling it for, to balance the budget, use it for the needs that we have already. Thank you. Council Member Sledge. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, so the current National School of the Arts, we had a little bit of discussion in committee, the current National School of the Arts is in District 17, Foster Avenue, the TPS property. Um, and just so everybody's aware, on the portion that Metro owns and controls, that is also where STEM prep is, and that's also where the old Hickman Elementary discussion we had a couple months ago, that is the landing place for it. Their facilities being prepared over the summer for that, uh, for that school as well. So there are multiple uses, MMPS uses that are over there. Um, totally understand my colleagues' uh, comments and conversations about that. We also discussed in committee, uh, this would put the School of the Arts, which desperately does need a new facility. That facility, quite frankly, was made for auto and trade. I mean, it has huge roll-up doors where you could do auto repair from years past. Um, the property that we're talking about, A8 Hermitage, puts those students m closer to the entities where hopefully they will be performing, where their works will be displayed, uh, the different arts properties across our downtown and central district. So. I totally appreciate everybody's uh, discussions on this. Just wanted to give a little bit of clarity if you weren't familiar with the TPS side about what MMPS uses are over there and kind of what the thinking's been. And that's been through discussions I've had with um, National School of the Arts teachers and administrators about what they'd like to see for their students. So thank you. Thank you. Council Member Weiner. Thank you, Bro Tim. I sure appreciate it. Um, just a couple of things that I want to point out that is really important to Metro Schools in so far as the location of, of this school. Number one, it's school assignment. To place this school in a corner of the county where it's not accessible to things like academia, and when you've got the kids at Nashville School of the Arts who rely on the arts, and they have the opportunity to be in proximity to those entities and those facilities that would support their academia and their, their coursework, then I think it's important to take a look at that. Insofar as school assignment, um, you've got to look at where the kids are coming from and where their parents can get them to and from that facility. And so for those two reasons, I will support this. Thank you. Seeing no one else in the queue, back to Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to renew my motion to approve with a re-referral to the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee. We have a second. It's been moved and seconded. Seeing no more discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? You adopt. We'll have to go to the Do we need to go to the board for that? Board if there's an abstention. We need to go to the board for that. Um, Madam Clerk. Can we take that to the board? What's the last one? Is he able to afford it? Uh, he has to. I don't know if he's going to willingly, but he has to. Because of the okay, we're, we're voting because there was an abstention. Because of the confusion. That's a plan. Because of the confusion. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> oh, that's the voting board. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I can't use the mic right now until we're through voting. I apologize. <laughs> Shout. It is to be re-referred to, to, yes, that was the motion. Okay, so has everyone voted? What he meant by the deferral was deferred and having another public hearing. Okay, Madam Clerk. Meeting, 
Has everyone voted? Twenty-one in favor, two against, nine abstentions. <coughs> okay. All right, so we're on bills on third reading and public hearing. This is substitute bill BL 2018-1413 by council member Scott Davis. It was disapproved by the planning commission, disapproved by the planning zoning and historical committee. Changes point 33 acres from RS5 to RM20 zoning on property located at 927 Douglas Avenue, approximately 285 feet east of Emmett Avenue. Council member Scott Davis. <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All right. So let me um, let me check on something. Um, this I may need to refer to the planning committee on, on the planning department on this. Um, we're trying to make sure that we have this in the right format. Does the planning department have a comment on this before we open the public hearing? The this was original. There was a public hearing held on a bill that was for an R six um, zoning, which was what the planning commission recommended approval of. Um, the there was um, subsequently a substitute to R M twenty um, through a miscommunication. The planning department did not re notice as R M twenty, um, and so new notices have not been sent out or posted for an R M twenty public hearing. Okay. So, Councilmember Davis says, I understand what has happened is that no notice has been given to this, so you can't proceed with the public hearing tonight. If it hasn't been noticed, you can't proceed. Is that correct? Uh, let me uh, turn to Mr. Jameson. That's correct. Uh, go ahead. That okay. is correct. Per state law, we cannot proceed. So, uh, Councilman Davis, what I think has to happen is that you have to defer to the first meeting in July. I know that's not necessarily maybe what you want to do. But I think pursuant to state law, you have to do that. Comment? <coughs> Go ahead, you're recognized. Hold on. There you go. Like every good public servant, we will follow the law, but I do have a statement. You're welcome to make a statement. Originally, when this bill was submitted, um, it was an RM20 bill. Planning had their recommendation of R6A. Uh, we respectfully disagreed. Public hearing was held at the Planning Commission and, and here. And, and I'm just going to be honest, some of our colleagues we tried to notice, played cute with the bill a couple times. I keep bringing my constituent up here and her supporters. Once again, I apologize to my constituents who came up here in support. Once again, we met with our legal counsel to see what we could do. We thought we were properly noticing this again, okay? And I feel a little hurt because this person does live in my district. Her property is right next door to Diesel College. And when I get back to my community, her supporters are gonna be very angry at me, and they should be. And when I sit here, and we laugh, we joke, Scott's disapproved bills. But when you see who my disapproved bill bills are for, it makes you look a second term. When you see they show up here with no opposition, you know, and I sincerely apologize to my constituent, but we're not going to let this die. And we'll do the proper deal. We're not going to break the law here. I thought we were doing it the right way. But once again, I'm getting to the point where... And this is not every time, and this is no reflection upon our planning staff, but when it comes to 
Certain people in this community, in this city, they feel like the government keeps kicking them in the teeth. And we're gonna do the right thing. And once again, I apologize to Kim Tucker, her family, and her supporters. I just found this out. And yes, um, yes ma'am, yes, council lady. I followed the rules and I feel I'm upset, but we'll do what's right. We'll follow the law, you know, but I still keep our promises. What I do for the larger developers and for those who get approved instantly, I do for the little people still. So we'll continue to fight, but I'm angry. God bless you all. all right, thank you, council member. So again, um, because of the nature of this, the, the proper thing to do is to defer. So let me, um, I've got people in the queue. Council Member Vercher, did you want to comment on this? Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to know what's, what's going on. Why wasn't it properly noticed? Why is the councilman just not finding out? I believe he, he have constituents here tonight. Um, I believe these are the same people um, that keep coming back as it relates to, to this bill. And I understand state law, uh, we won't be able to vote on it tonight, but um, I'm at a point that, you know, we really need to go ahead and, and, and put this to bed. We won't be able to do it tonight. Just wanna make sure that proper processes are being followed so that when we come back, there's not, there's not another issue. So just fundamentally for me, I need to understand what a breakdown is, who was responsible for noticing it, why didn't it get noticed? And why is the council member here tonight on the floor standing up saying he just found out about this? Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, council member. What we're trying to do is, um, is, is determine a, a fair and equitable way of dealing with this. We cannot do it tonight. Um, I'm not sure what, uh, if, we can, uh, if we can do this on some type of special occasion at one of our meetings so we don't have to to wait two months because of the of the concerns or whatever happened in order to make to try to get this at least before us in a proper way um, so I just asked mr. Jamison mr. Jamison if you want to comment obviously we're looking at this on the fly but uh, mr. Jamison do you have any ideas of if there's something we can do before that first meeting in July uh, the vice mayor has it within his prerogative to schedule um, a public hearing at regularly scheduled council meetings uh, other than the first Tuesday of the month he could do so in June there'd be uh, budget considerations to be aware of, but he has that. He could do it the second Tuesday in June, um, sometime before July. The, if it adds any clarity at all, this was originally approved by planning as R6. At the March 19th council meeting, it was substituted to RM20. That's not what planning approved. The council member re-referred it to planning and zoning committee and placed it back on the May 7th, today's schedule. What I believe he intended by that was to have it at May 7th public hearing. But what I believe planning heard was it's just going to be on the May 7th agenda. That was the miscommunication. So there was no public notice, no fault on either side, but there was no required public notice issued. Um, we attempted to contact the council member by phone and email um, and uh, regret uh, that it was not provided earlier. So, uh, Mr. Jameson, one other question, and then I'll go to people in the queue. Uh, how much notice do we have to do in order to get this thing before us at a subsequent meeting? 21-day notice. 21-day notice. Okay. So, um, okay, let me go to the people in the queue, and let's figure out what we can do with this. Again, um, we always want to be accommodating if we can, but we also want to make sure that we're in proper format. Council Member Gilmore, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I guess I just had the same question um, that Council Member Virtue had, and just why after, we, we have the people standing up there, after three hours, are they just now finding out? I mean, it, I, I, I get it if it, it wasn't noticed, but why three hours in? They, they have to hear everybody else's, and then now theirs can't be heard. Where What happened there? 
So again, I think Mr. Jamison tried to explain what happened. I am not sure of all the details of this, um, but um, all I know is that in order to make sure that we do it properly, we cannot have the public hearing tonight. That is my understanding. If we do, then we're in violation. We can't do that. So what we're trying to do is figure out if there's a, an accommodation to make sure that we can have this thing within the next, um, so we don't have to wait for two months, so we have, have it within a month. Always happy to accommodate. Again, we typically, um, well, we do not have public hearings the first meeting in June because of the budget. But um, it may be, um, we're going to listen to everybody else in the queue and we're going to see if we can actually specially set that. Okay, and then I just had a follow-up question though, but why would it just be listed on the May 4th agenda? I, I don't just, I don't understand that. Why would the planning commission just approve it for the May 4th agenda? and not approve it for public, I'm, that piece is not clear either. Yeah, so I'm not sure, I don't know if the planning department has a response or if Mr. Jamison can answer that planning department. Sure, um, going back and looking at the minutes, the um, we, we believed that the um, re-referral was back to planning and zoning committee, which it did appear on today, but we didn't see any indication that it was actually set back for public hearing. And so that was the reason that we did not prepare or um, prepare the notices or post the signs. Um, it was a belief that it was just being re-referred to the PNZ committee. Council Member Gilmore, any other follow-up? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Haywood. Uh, uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I think my questions have been answered. I'm just befuddled about uh, what has happened here tonight. Uh, as a council member, I'm embarrassed. I'm just really embarrassed, and I don't think it's anybody's fault in particular, but I think that we definitely owe the community a, an apology, at the least an apology. Thank you. All right, thank you, council member. Uh, council member Withers. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I mean, this kind of just goes back to my point from before. This property is around the corner from where I live. I know this site. I know this community. I know how hard my council member colleague works for his constituents. So incredibly hard. But following procedure is really important. And what this shows is that when you start dodging procedure or trying to find ways or to work around processes that are well established, that you run into situations like this. What should have happened is you should have brought a disapproved bill for public hearing, and we would have had the public hearing when it was scheduled to be heard on a disapproved bill. That is what should have happened. What actually happened is we had a public hearing on R6, which many of us would have supported. Then it went to the Planning and Zoning Committee, at which time I stated, and I think several of my other colleagues stated, we will support R6 because the objective factors that were, that were factors for disapproval by the planning staff are not gonna change based on public opinion. The lot narrowness and configuration is not gonna change. The presence of streams, the lack of, an un, of, a, the lack of a built out alley, all of those objective factors, which are the factors for, for recommended disapproval of REM, are not changed. The blanket opening of neighborhoods to short term rentals with REM zoning, whether or not that's the intention of the owner, are not gonna change. And so what should have happened is that a disapproved bill should have been brought for a public hearing, just like many others had, and then this procedure would have been much clearer rather than going around systems and around systems to where other constituents in the community can't, can't follow it themselves. That is where the breakdown is. I, my own recollection, and, and I know that you're angry, my own recollection is that in the Planning Zoning and Historical Committee, I kind of made a comment like that, that sure, we can have a, public hearing on, on the RM, but if it's still disapproved, if those are still objective infrastructure reasons why it's disapproved, those are not things that are gonna be changed as much as neighbors wanna support their neighbor, which I think is great. But we need to work within policy, within uh, uh, objective zoning standards, infrastructure requirements. I mean, that's what zoning is, and as much as we on this council complain about the city building out stuff without having infrastructure in place, if we are the very body 
um, that is approving all these things without the infrastructure in place, then it is we, this body, who are the problem. And then if it's we, this body, who circumvent processes all the time, that is why we are actually disrespecting the public by creating these situations that no one, <laughs> that no one can follow. And that's what it is. Had a disapproved bill been brought for a public hearing, it would be different. All right, thank you, Councilman Weathers. Before I recognize anybody else, so um, uh, pursuant to the rules, um, the Vice Mayor has the ability to specially set a, um, a public hearing on a particular matter. Uh, because of the confusion, because of the concerns, um, I'm going to specially set this for the first meeting of June. Uh, we typically do not have any public hearings uh, held uh, on that first meeting of June, but we, because we don't want to wait two months, we are going to specially set this for the first meeting in June. That will be, uh, we will get, make sure that we get out proper notice to make sure that it's legal. So we will um, have this on the first meeting of the Metro Council in June. It is specially set, right? Now, um, we've got two people in the queue. I know Council Member Davis wants to speak. So does Council Member Hurt. I'm going to go to Council Member Hurt too, first uh, for any comments, and then I'll come back to you, Council Member Davis. But uh, the ruling has been made. It has been specially set for the first meeting in June. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And I totally agree with my colleague that at the minimum, we should offer common courtesy apology. And I think that uh, we can refrain from pointing blame, um, but let's just offer an apology from the throne. Thank you, Council Member Hurt. So if you're referring to this as the Iron Throne, um, <laughs> then I do apologize. I am sorry that people had to wait. I am sorry that this has happened. Look, there are lots of bills that we've had. It is now 920. We've had uh, eight pages of bills on public hearing. Um, with as many bills as this council has going through, sometimes uh, things get misconstrued, so we apologize for the delay. But um, the best we can do to make sure that we are legally within our rights and we have the matter properly before us is to get the notice out properly and to make sure that um, people understand that it is properly noticed and the best we can do at this point with 21 days notice is to put it on the first meeting in June. And again, um, what I will tell you is that um, I believe it's Ms. Tucker. We apologize. Um, we are sorry sometimes these things happen, um, but we are the best we can do and the fastest we can do it is to accommodate this on the first meeting in June. You will be the only matter that will be on public hearing at that time. All right? All right. Um, and I do think it's proper. Council Member Davis, I'm going to come to you. Uh, but after that, we have some other bills on the calendar that we have to take care of. But um, because it's your constituent, I'm going to recognize you. Council Member Davis. Originally, to the planning staff and the commission, this was a submitted as an ARM 20 bill. When we had the public hearing, I was clear we could rewind the tape that this bill will be coming back as a disapproved bill because planning recommended R6A, um, the constituent wanted RM20. So we brought it back. A couple of us tried to play cute with the bill and got it off track, but we got it back on. We had some help from our legal counsel there. But now when this happens, it, 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 and, and to suggest that it did not go through with the proper processes, but we do this all the time, that there was a shortcut of some kind? No. This was originally submitted as an RM20 bill. It was recommended by the staff to R6A. We didn't agree with the recommendations, and at the public hearing, I stated that I'm bringing this back as a disapproved bill. We all knew, and we were submitting the substitute through the planning committees that we always do, Couple of people didn't like it, didn't agree with it, try to play cute with my constituents' bill. And what I'm asking them to go back on those tapes and, 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 and listen, because we record everything, and see who played with your bill. It wasn't your councilman. But look at those people and ask them why. And I apologize once again, you know, but yes, I'm angry, and that's fine, you know. If we want to talk about infrastructure, 
Sand Creek is behind a 155 you know, dorm room right next door is the Diesel College. So apparently there are no infrastructure issues there. I mean. Okay. Oh my. Go, go ahead and let, um, let the councilman finish. Obviously, I'm just telling people back at home, look who's against your bill, email them, be nice to everybody, but I'm not going to sit here and let anybody play politics against my constituent, no matter if you vote for it or not. I have to stand up for them, and I have to stand up for Ms. Tucker, and I can't let this keep happening to her. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. All right. So we are now ready to move on to uh, the um, resolutions. Uh, both consent agenda resolutions and resolutions. It is now 925. Uh, we have a series of bills on a uh, series of resolutions on the consent agenda. Um, because of the nature of the first resolution that has now been deferred and is now in front of us and has to be taken up today, this is resolution RS 2019-1617 as amended. These are the charter amendment amendment the charter this is the resolution on the charter amendments if unless someone has an objection i would like to take that up now before we get to the consent agenda so that we can actually go ahead and proceed on this this when we start changing the charter obviously that's very very important we need to concentrate so before we get too much further down the road if there's an objection please let me know please raise your hand if not then we're going to take up RS 2019 16 17 as amended first. Then we will get to the consent agenda. All right, seeing no objection, we are on resolution RS 2019 16 17 as amended. Um, what I would like to do is quickly um, ask Mr. Jameson, if he would, to uh, just give us an update on where we are. If you remember, um, where, when the power went out, we were in the middle of adopting certain amendments. Mr. Jamison, quickly, if you would, please give just a quick description of where we are in this process. The resolution originally proposed five amendments, A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, a was added, B was withdrawn, C was added. We were on uh, Amendment D by Councilman Roten with respect to Planning Commission composition. <coughs> Councilman Roten had a revised version of Amendment D, an amendment to Amendment D, that was approved, and now you are on that Amendment D as amended. That will leave that motion or that amendment, and then Amendment E by Council Lady Blaylock left for individual votes by the Council. Each will require 27 for inclusion. And then at the conclusion of that, the entire resolution as a whole will be subject to a final vote, again requiring 27 votes. Okay, so I'm going to go to Council Member Rosenberg first, since he's the sponsor. Then I'm going to go to Council Member uh, Roten. So again, we are now on, we have passed um, the amendment to Amendment D, but we have not voted yet on Amendment D as amended. That's where we are at this point. Uh, point uh, do you have a question about where we are? Uh, Council Member Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I see uh, RS, uh, what's the number? 1720, 2019-1720. Uh, Could you please tell me, it seems to me it looks like identical, the bill uh, resolution we are about to discuss, and why do we have RS uh, 1720? So do we discuss both, or what's the procedure, and why do we have, uh, looks like a similar to identical resolution? 1720 would not be considered in the event that 1617 was adopted. If 1617 failed for whatever reason, 1720 would be eligible. It essentially repeats and submits verbatim the text of Amendment A. Um, I will defer to the sponsor of 1720 to add any other uh, rationale as to why it's proposed. Councilmember Rosenberg, any additional comments? It's, uh, th th thank you, Mr. President. It's basically there as a, a backup uh, as we work through the process and the filing deadlines leading up to this meeting. It's, it's, it's one or the other. Councilmember Johnson, anything else? All right. Uh, Councilmember Gilmore. I just had an overall uh, question about when these uh, charter amendments can be entered and how often. That was my question. All right. Mr. Jameson. Under the charter, each council term is allowed to submit charter amendments twice. Uh, a particular resolution can have multiple individual amendments, but you get two bites at the apple per term. 
You took one bite, so to speak, last year, and that went to the ballot, and various charter amendments were adopted. This is your second option. Uh, if this uh, is adopted, that's the last point you can do it. There are also two deadlines under state law and uh, the charter with respect to when you would have to submit materials to this body, to the clerk, and the election commission. And today, May 7th, is the last regular council meeting you have scheduled before those deadlines expire. Okay, thank you. And so, but you can um, submit them anytime before then if it were a council, a new council term. Sure, you can start all over again in the fall. It's just two times out of the four years. Per term, correct. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Murphy. I'd like to speak on the bill before we vote. Okay, uh, Council Member Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I am um, still a little uh, unclear okay. of how all of this is going to work. I think it would be helpful if we were to go back and uh, state those amendments uh, because there was one that I was unclear about and I did not want to necessarily voice my approval and I'm not sure if I did. So I, I, it just would be helpful sure. if there were some clarifications as it relates to all of this. So, uh, Council Member, let me ask you a question. Okay, so um, we, have, um, we have Amendment A. Well, I'm specifically talking about the rank choice. With the rank choice, okay. So um, let me tell you where we are, and then you tell me what, how you would like to proceed. We have Amendment A, which was amended and adopted by this body. Amendment B was withdrawn. Amendment C was approved. That's where we are. So we have two amendments on this measure at this point. We have two more to go, two more amendments. Amendment D and Amendment E. Right currently, we're at Amendment D. We can go through D and E and then go back because we're going to vote on the, then this body has to vote on the entire package as at one time, okay? So um, we can either go through them all right now or we can go ahead and complete our work on D and E and then we can start asking questions about the whole thing. So you're going to get a chance to vote on the whole package at the end anyway. But. Okay, and I was in the charter, I'm on the charter revision committee okay. and they said that it was a backup. I'm still not sure what that actually means. So, you know, some people, you know, you just have to explain it to them like they are five-year-old. Well, no, uh, this is... Uh, you this know, is I'm just not one of those, you know, super brilliant, intelligent people, and I just can't decipher. I don't, I can't do well with the gray area. I just need to hear it in black and white so I can fully understand what it is that I am voting right. for or not. So thank you, council member. Let me, exp uh, I'll explain it again and I'll tell you exactly where we are. <coughs> Mr. Jamison can help me, but, but you are perfectly within your rights to make sure that this is because we're voting on putting things on the ballot so it is perfectly proper to make sure that we have this right. Again, um, this is our second shot at the apple as, as, the, uh, as Mr. Jamison has explained. Uh, we are gonna be voting on this at the end after we figure out all the amendments to go on. In order for us to approve the whole package, you have to get 27 votes on the board. Um, if you remember, we have voted on Amendment A as amended that did get 27, it got 27 plus votes. So right now, that one is still there. Amendment B was withdrawn by the sponsor. Amendment C was proposed. It also got 27 votes. Doesn't mean it's going anywhere yet because now we have to do Amendment D, uh, which is before us at this point, and then Amendment E. Once we get through all that and figure out which ones, which each of the amendments got 27 votes, then we're on the entire resolution as amended, and we'll see which amendments are surviving, and then um, and then you have the chance to say and ask whatever questions you want, and then we'll take a vote. We're on the board, and if it does not get 27 votes, then none of these show up on the ballot. 
Does that make sense? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna stay with Amendment D. We're gonna try to work through that, and then we work through Amendment E. Then we will have the whole measure before us, and then we're gonna open up the board and let anybody ask whatever questions they have. Okay, now I'm so gonna I go have, back to you. If you could pick up your microphone there. I'm sorry, I have, I have one other question. So say, for instance, that I do not vote for Amendment D, mm -hmm. but it does pass with uh, the 27 votes. So then when we go back to make the totality vote, uh, total vote, then will I be voting for Amendment D? Because if I did not vote for it the first time, then why would, it, would, why would I vote for it the second? So uh, Mr. Jamison may be able to explain it better than I can, but if you don't vote for Amendment D, but, but it does get 27 votes, mm -hmm. then it becomes part of, it's like a package deal. So D would stay with this resolution, and then you have to determine whether you want to vote for the entire resolution or vote against it. You can't pinpoint them at that point. You're voting for the whole thing or you're not voting for it. Right, so I guess that's the problem that I have is the package deal. You know, voting for all of it, we get it all in a package deal. That's, that's the concern that I actually have. But I guess we've already voted on having a package deal. This I thought we was getting a discount. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Hart, you've got it, but it's just the way this works. So again, we vote individually on the amendments, and then we take them up as a package deal. All right, so um, we are on Amendment D as amended. I'm gonna go to Council Member Rosenberg first, and then I'm gonna go to Council Member Roden. Councilmember Rosenberg, any comments before we take up, as we're taking up amendment, amendment D as amended? Yes, Mr. President, thank you, and thanks for that explanation. Um, first, let me ask everybody to check the area around your feet, make sure you don't ha kick out any wires, that there's nothing loose under there that will <laughs> shut down our meeting tonight. It'll be most, appreci most appreciated. Um, Beyond that, yeah, uh, just to follow up on the earlier point, what we're doing tonight is not to implement any policies, but to give people the opportunity to vote. Um, we're giving folks a voice. The vote at the end is basically honoring the idea of allowing people the right to vote on the amendments that the council decided to put before them. And with that, uh, let's move on to continue with the please. All right, thank you, council member. I'm gonna go to council member Roten because it's his amendment. Councilmember Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, this amendment is fairly simple. It's, a, it's an amendment to hopefully put some suburban type representation on the Planning Commission. Um, ever since the city was formed, when it was first formed, you had about the same number of people in the downtown core, the old city, and the same number of people out in the more suburban general services district. Uh, right now, uh, it's almost a three to one a uh, difference in population out in the county as to the downtown city. Um, you almost have a three to one as far as minority, minority population out in the county uh, as opposed to the city. Yet the Planning Commission continues to have more people, much more people, uh, from the downtown urban core on the Planning Commission. To me, it seems only fair that at least a certain number of people on the Planning Commission come from the suburban parts of the county. Antioch, one of the fastest growing parts of this county, has never had a member on the Planning Commission. Um, what I'm doing is not changing how they get selected. It is just requiring that the mayor looks outside the downtown core for more people um, who have interest in how neighborhoods are being constructed out in the county. Um, the plan we all know the Planning Commission does a lot of things that affect things that we don't do here. First thing they do is they set up Nashville Next, which was the planning for the entire county. They do neighborhood um, approvals, suburban neighborhood approvals without any, anyone at the council looking at those. You have to go down there, <coughs> make a speech, but the vote is with the planning commission. Uh, when disapproved bills get here, they have in essence had six votes on the floor of this council um, when we have to vote because they made the determination that it wasn't worthy. Um, we also, they, by charter, also uh, send the capital spending plan 
to the mayor's office, and that is by charter that they do that. Um, and then last, um, there are numerous other things that go through the planning commission that do not come to this council. So for this reason, uh, a lot of people in my area thought that they needed representation on the planning commission. That is why I'm standing here and that is why I'm asking you to uh, put it on the ballot to allow the citizens of this county to make a determination if they just want some type of representation. The mayor will still select. Uh, I've had talks with the mayor's office and we worked this out and I uh, talked to the planning commission, the vice mayor, legal counsel, and we thought that this was a fair compromise um, as opposed to my earlier recommendation. So I would ask you all to vote for this just to make sure that the majority of the population in this county are represented on the Planning Commission. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, originally, I was in support of this uh, previous uh, uh, Amendment D before it was amended. Uh, that was a have a Planning Commission appoint from each district, uh, similar to uh, school board district, you know, combine all the, our district together and so forth. The reason I support it was because planning commissioners should decide a zone change or subdivision regulation based on the general plan and policy. So having that additional geographical knowledge might be helpful. However, you know, this one, uh, general uh, area, uh, based on 1963 and, you know, urban core. So that would be uh, kind of same thing, but I think what a neighborhood, uh, neighborhood leader, neighborhood activist wanted uh, from or to a planning commission was and is neighborhood representative. One thing I don't want to have putting this uh, amendment on the ballot is by having a general area versus, uh, you know, downtown core, automatically think, oh, that will have neighborhood representative representation, which is not true because mayor can still appoint planning commissioner. They can be architect, they can be a real estate uh, person, uh, they can be developer in any of uh, occupation. So just because they're living in general district does not mean those persons who are appointed to the planning commission will automatically represent neighborhood. So I think one thing we really need is before Nashville next, you know, we did have a annual a sub area, uh, which is, you know, sub 14 sub area, uh, community plan update. That include all the community, you know, developer, neighborhood people, you know, merchandise, everywhere, everyone who live in that community was welcomed. I think we do need those kind of micro individual community plan update because Nashville Next is a big picture and a general area. And you won't be able to, you know, pinpoint to each and individual street and so forth. So I don't know how you know, many of my colleagues will feel opposed or support. I have you know, quite a mixed feeling, but I would like to ask to the planning commission, uh, planning staff uh, at this point, just what we need to have fair and balanced uh, representation. We do need uh, each sub area community plan update annually and you know going through each uh, community so each community will have at least five to six years uh, update and you know you don't have to wait 15 to 20 years to be updated and the policy in, in and guideline is not in line with what's happening on the you know their community so thank you thank you council member uh council member murphy thank you vice mayor um some of y'all know that in rules, I've had some questions about the administration and the way they appoint boards and commission members. Um, and one of the things that we have heard time and time again from the administration is the more requirements that we put on picking these boards and commission nominees and things like that, the harder it is for them to find nominees who have the time, have the energy, have the you know capacity to serve in a lot of these things. 
And so one concern here is that we're putting some more restrictions on there and could be limiting the pool. But another concern for me is um, coming from the Tennessee Code Annotated, and I'm sorry, I screenshotted this, and so I don't have the citation, but I'm gonna read part of it of, of who can be selected. And it says that the mayor shall strive to ensure that the racial com uh, composition of the planning commission is at least proportionately reflective of the municipality's racial minority population. And so my concern is, is our population, um, when it comes to affordable housing, and we've talked a lot about affordable housing and affordable and, and housing equity here tonight and over the past four years, my concern is, is that as our population continues to grow and continues to shrink in some areas, grow in other areas, and transport back and forth between these these districts that this are, or zones or what have you that that this um, charter amendment is setting up is that we're going to be further tying our hands and potentially put us at risk that at one point we might not our mayor might not be able to really effectively comply with this state law to make sure that our racial minorities are well represented on the planning commission and so with that I cannot support this um, this because I think it further ties the hands to make sure that we have a diverse population on the Planning Commission that I think is vital to making sure that Nashville stays vital. Great, thank you. Councilman, uh, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I appreciate the, the comments of my two prior colleagues. Uh, I'm, I really, really struggled with the original version, although I'm uh, come to the Planning Commission or came before the Planning Commission and come to the Council as a former neighborhood president, I definitely understand the, the importance of having strong neighborhood organizations that can really work with, with the community, work with the development community and find common ground um, and sort of set uh, expectations. I, I think that's, that's really important. But the word neighborhood gets um, thrown around a little bit and means different things to different people. Um, and so um, sometimes, um, sometimes in one geographic area you can have uh, more than one neighborhood representative or neighborhood group, and they take completely different stances on the same topic. Um, so again, the, the word neighborhood is a little bit of a buzzword, and I just I want to be hesitant about that. I definitely feel the concern about the idea that um, we would basically break up the planning commission into separate districts with an expectation that those folks would be a representative of that district. The Planning Commission is not meant to be a representative body. We are the representative body. We have final authority over zoning. We have very contentious debates about it, but hopefully we have lots of, of community meetings and listen to the constituents as much as we can. So I, I do share the concern still that sort of creating, even if it's only two districts basically, but creating that geographic separation creates an expectation for some folks that isn't necessarily gonna be borne out by reality. Um, because you could have two, two folks in the same neighborhood, as we've seen even tonight, um, that have very, very different stances on a development proposal, um, and, and they both could be neighborhood presidents or neighborhood leaders and live in the same neighborhood and look, be looking at the same proposal. So I think that sets up some false expectations. Um, I personally believe that our planning commission needs to focus, help this council pr provide technical expertise. Some of us have a little bit more of a background in it than others do, just as some of us have more of a background in finance than others do. We really rely on the planning commission to provide technical expertise um, about zoning and land use and make good recommendations to us. I believe that that's the appropriate role for them. Other than lot subdivisions and things of that nature, um, the only thing that those are really the only things that the Planning Commission ultimately decides is lot subdivisions uh, according to rules that they set, which are set through a public hearing. So um, I, uh, I, I still, I appreciate where my colleague is coming from. I, I personally still believe that the way to ensure that we have more geographic uh, diversity uh, on the Planning Commission is to work with the mayor's office to find good folks in the community that are really savvy, that have paid a lot of attention to zoning. We've seen neighborhood advocates work very, very closely with planning in Whites Creek in particular, a couple of other areas, Haynes, Trinity. Folks who are very, very knowledgeable about working with the Planning Commission would be great Planning Commissioners. We as council members need to watch for those community members, nurture that talent and find ways to get them on the Planning Commission so that they can have that expertise benefit our whole county. I believe that that's the way to go rather than creating separate geographic boundaries. And so with all due respect to my colleague, and I understand, I totally understand where you're coming from. I can't support this amendment tonight. All right, thank you. Council Member Sledge. 
Thank you, Mr. Fosbury. I'll be brief. Um, I'm not really sure where I am on this amendment. I think there's some merits to both sides, and I really appreciate the council members who have uh, brought it up tonight. I will say, I think the best process we've gone through uh, in this term in identifying community leaders was through the community oversight board process. So we've got more than 100 community leaders who came out, and no, we weren't talking about zoning at that point, but we have a whole batch of Nashvillians who have not had, quite frankly, the opportunity to take a leadership role in the city and boards and commissions, and they're right there raising their hands saying, I'm ready to serve. So whether this goes on or not, I think we've got a pool of people that have self-identified and that we have screened as a council who can be put on these boards and commissions, and I'd hope this body would um, consider that as we go forward, not just for the Planning Commission, but other boards and commissions as well. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Council Member Bedney. I think I was the first, I think I was the first Southeast member of the Planning Commission. I don't think before you guys uh, generously voted for me to be on the Planning Commission, I don't think there was one. I was the first. So it took 50 years, over 50 years, for a Southeast resident to have a seat at the Planning Commission. Now, I could understand some of the concerns about it, but clearly there is a structural problem here. Some reason why, unless the political body chooses somebody like me to good or bad represent the Southeast uh, point of view in the Planning Commission, there hasn't been one there before. So we do have a problem <coughs> on appointing people that come from suburban parts of the city. We have a problem. We don't see them being appointed to the Planning Commission. And there is a benefit to having uh, a suburban point of view, a southeast point of view, a Jolton point of view, a Madison point of view. All of you have a point of view that is missing. It's, it's, it's killing, it's not enriching the debate and the point of view and the process that makes for good decisions at the Planning Commission. So. I will encourage you to let it, let the voters decide. Just put it on the referendum. Let's have a conversation, a debate at the city to see if this is a good idea or a bad idea. And hopefully next time, the council won't have to elect the first Jolton person at the Planning Commission. Uh, it, will, it will happen naturally because we'll start electing people that are qualified and can represent uh, the city at the Planning Commission. So please, both for this, leave it to the voters to decide. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Speaking of Goodlettsville, Council Member Pardue. Thanks, sir. I call for the question, okay. please. The previous question has been called for. We're voting on the previous question. All in favor of the previous question, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The previous question uh, prevails. We are on um, Amendment D as amended. Okay. So we are voting. It's a machine vote. It has to have 27 votes to pass. Um, Madam Clerk, if you would, um, let me clear the board. Madam Clerk, um, if you would open up the machines. Again, we are on RS 2019-1617. We're just voting on Amendment D as amended. Madam Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. Hmm. Madam Clerk. Mayor, Vice Mayor. Huh? I, unfortunately, I I don't, uh, according to the panel, uh, we have 27, 26 in favor, six against, and one abstention. All right, so the uh, Amendment D fails. <clears throat> We're now on Amendment E. Uh, so I'm going to go to uh, Council Member Rosenberg, um, or I can go to Council Member uh, Blaylock. Council Member Blaylock, you're rec recognized on Amendment E. This is same exact amendment as it was previously. 
All right, just for, because it's been a while, if you can explain it or I can ask Mr. Jamison to explain it. I'll let Mr. Jamison do it, please. Mr. Jamison, we are on Amendment E. The charter currently provides that if there's a vacancy on the Board of Education that it's to be appointed by uh, the two-thirds majority of the remaining school board members. Since that charter provision was drafted, state law has changed and now puts that authority within the legislative body before the council. So this is almost uh, could be described as a housekeeping amendment to bring the charter into compliance with state law. Okay. Uh, council Member Blaylock? Yes, I move for approval. Okay, got a motion to approve. We're on Amendment E, properly seconded. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I think it's a, a great amendment, but my question was, what happens if this amendment does not pass? Do we still, it's just state law still rules, right? Correct. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Any other discussion? All right, so we are on Amendment E, and properly moved, properly seconded. Again, we have to go on the board. Any other discussion before we vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, if you would um, open up the machines. We are voting on Amendment E. Also has to get 27 votes. Everybody wanting to, anybody wishing, okay. All right, Madam Clerk, if you will uh, close the machine, take the vote. <laughs> 33 in favor, none against, no abstentions. All right, so Amendment E passes with 33 votes. All right, so. We are now on resolution RS 2019 16 17 as amended. Uh, let's go back over that and make sure, and then I'm going to go to Council Member Rosenberg for final discussion on it. Um, uh, RS 29, uh, 2019 16 17 as amended. The way it's been amended is we have an Amendment A as amended, Amendment C, and Amendment E. Okay. So there are three amendments, Amendment A, Amendment C, and Amendment E. So we are now on Resolution RS 2019-16-17 as amended. I'm going to go to Council Member Rosenberg first. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so we've come to the end of a long process. Um, we can rehash previous debates. I'd be glad to advocate for any or all of the amendments. Um, at this point, the question before us is whether um, you believe your constituents should have a, a voice in what our charter looks like. We're not implementing any policies tonight. You don't have to love everything. I hope you do. You don't have to love everything. The idea is simply whether we want to uh, offer an exercise in democracy to folks when they go to the ballot box. Um, I'll leave it to that and be glad to respond to anything as any more discussion continues and I move approval. Thank you. All right. So um, there's a motion to approve as amended, <laughs> properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. Um, so last time we were going through this exercise before the great unfortunateness, um, <laughs> there was still legislation at the state regarding uh, ranked choice voting. And at that time, I think many of us and many of the reports on the news acted like that legislation was going to pass. Um, I did a little research today, spoke to both assistants in the House and the Senate. That legislation at the state actually was a caption bill. The amendment was not um, filed on the public in the public. It's, it's not on the legislative service that I subscribe to. It's not on the state capitol website. So ranked choice voting is still not something that is allowed by state law. So whereas I think, uh, what, 33 of us just voted in favor of Amendment D, which cleans up our charter to be in compliance with state law, if we pass this with Amendment A, 
and our voters then pass it, that means that our charter is gonna be again out of compliance with state law because it is not allowed to do, we are not allowed to do ranked choice voting. And so, I, I mean, I think I'd, my procedure is a little off here. Um, I would recommend that somebody who voted on the prevailing side make a motion to withdraw Amendment A so we don't um, set our voters up to think that they can vote for something and then expect to see it on the next ballot. Because again, and it, it, yes, that legislation can come back at the state level next year. It was sent to summer study and it was returned to the clerk's desk. That would be uh, House Bill 599, Senate Bill 970. Uh, but again, no amendment was put on that bill. And um, I think that we're setting ourselves up to be explaining to our voters, yes, you voted for ranked choice voting on the ballot, but we still can't do it because it's not in favor, it's not allowed by state law. When again, 33 of us just voted to clean up <coughs> our, our school board choices. So I vote, since I voted against the MMA, I don't think that I can move to rescind um, that amendment or make a motion to put it on the table or something like that. But I would encourage y'all, 33 of us just voted, clean up the charter so it would match state law. I, I think it's gonna be very misleading to our, to our voters to put this on the ballot. They think that they're voting for ranked choice uh, voting and they can't do it. I'm gonna go back to Council Member Rosenberg for a response. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, respectfully, that's not entirely accurate. Um, I had the opportunity to go testify in front of the Senate on ranked choice voting. The questions were very good. Um, they were asking what Nashville's position on it. I got to explain the the power outage to the to the Senate um, and discuss things more deeply. Um, it was filed at the end. Unfortunately, the Secretary of State's office did not provide guidance quickly enough for them to get it in final form. However, it's the view of many attorneys that that is super, superfluous legislation anyway, while the Secretary of State's office has contended that ranked choice voting is not consistent with state law. There's uh, an action right now in court uh, to arguing that it is in fact consistent with state law. Um, there are enough people that believe that, that this, the legislature actually had a bill the previous year uh, from some folks who wanted to make ranked choice voting illegal and it didn't go anywhere because there wasn't the will to do that. Um, the contention of many is that it is consistent with state law. Regardless, this bill, this, uh, pardon me, this charter amendment would not put us in uh, separate from state law because there's mention in it that this is a trigger that says as long as it's consistent with state law, we're gonna do it, and if for some reason it's found to be inconsistent with state law, we're not gonna do it. Again, this is an option, an opportunity to give people a voice on a thing that is compliant with state law, and, and I hope we get to do that. Right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pardue. Call for the question, please. <laughs> Too damn tired to pull them right <laughs> so um, before this session is over, this term is over, I think we need to get Council Member Pardue something where he doesn't even have to do anything. <laughs> the previous question has been called. We're voting on the previous question. All in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Previous question prevails. Okay, so we are now on um, we are now on resolution RS 2019, 16, 17 as amended, requires 27 votes. So Madam Clerk, you have to, um, okay. Council Member Swope, for what reason? Previous question's been called. Would yes. you ask Council Jamison to go through just the top captions of A, C, and E, so that we are very clear on what we're voting on here, since this is the final vote. Amendment A provides for ranked choice voting for mayor, vice mayor, at-large members, and district council members. Amendment C uh, upgrades the debt reports and includes performance metrics uh, in the debt reports from the finance department. And Amendment E would render the charter compliant with state law on how vacancies to the school board are to be appointed by this body. All right, we are um, voting on RS 2019-1617 as amended. Uh, requires 27 votes for passage. Madam Clerk, if you will open up the machine. Okay. 
Okay. Madam Clerk, close the machine, take the vote. Twenty three in favor, seven against, three abstentions. Twenty three yes, seven no, three abstentions, six not voting. Um, our resolution R is twenty nineteen, sixteen, seventeen as amended fails. All right, so we are now on the consent agenda. Um, what I'm going to do is go through the numbers on the consent agenda. If there is something that needs to be pulled, please let me know. <coughs> so uh, these are, again, the resolutions that are on the consent agenda. Resolution RS 2019-1696, 1697, 1698, 1699, 1700. 1701, 02, 03, 04, 05, 1706, 1707, 1708, 1709, all the way to 1719, 1723, 1724. Okay, so um, <clears throat> maybe another way to do it is to tell you what's not on the consent agenda. Um, RS 2019 1685 is not. 2019-1720 is not, 1721 uh, is not. Those are the ones that are not on the consent agenda. Okay, anything that needs to be taken care of? Sounds like there's a ghost up here. I don't know what that is. All right, so um, unless something needs to be pulled, those are the matters on the consent agenda. Uh, and so I'm going to read the captions. RS 319-1696 by Virtue and Van Rees approves a grant from the Office of the Mayor to the Nashville State Community College Foundation to support the Nashville Grad Program. Resolution RS 319-1697 by Virtue and Gilmore approves the Healthy Start Initiative Eliminating Racial Ethnic Disparities Grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metro Board of Health to provide a variety of services in reducing infant mortality for pregnant and parenting women. RS 2019-1698 by Virtue and Gilmore approves a grant from the SAFE Coalition to the Metro Board of Health to provide funding for Metro Animal Contro Care and Control Safety Net Voucher Program. RS 2019-1699 by Councilmember Gilmore approves an amendment to a grant from the March of Dines Foundation to the Metro Board of Health to promote increasing preconception and interconception education for women of childbearing age in Davidson County. Uh, 2019-1700, Virtue and Gilmore approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide chronic disease prevention and management services to reduce risks associated with pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or heart disease and stroke. RS 2019-1701 by Virtue and Gilmore approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health for a Healthy Start Home Visiting Program to identify and provide comprehensive services to improve outcomes for eligible families who reside at, in at-risk communities. RS 2019-1702 by Gilmore uh, approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and the University of Tennessee College of Social Work to participate in a review of the organizational resiliency assessment. RS 2019-1703 by Gilmore approves an agreement between the Metro Board of Health and the Food and Drug Administration to participate in a long-term food, feed, and cosmetic information sharing agreement. RS 319-1704 by Virtue of Syracuse and others. Approves a grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission and the Metro Arts Commission for funding to nonprofit organizations to nurture artists, arts or, art organizations, and support development of Davidson County's cultural resources. RS 319-1705 by Virtue and Syracuse. Approves a grant from the Friends of Two Rivers Mansion to the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to provide partial funding for one employee salary for administrative support at Two Rivers Mansion. RS 319-1706 by Virtue Syracuse and Gilmore approves a grant from the Friends of Two Rivers Mansion to the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to provide funding for two part-time employees to conduct historic tours at Two Rivers Mansion during June, July, and August 2019. RS 319-1707 by Virtue Syracuse and Gilmore approves a grant from the Friends of Two Rivers Mansion to the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to provide funding for two part-time employees to conduct historic tours at Two Rivers Mansion during the 2019 Christmas season. RS 319-1708 by Virtue of Syracuse and Gilmore appropriates $250,000 to a grant contract between the National Public Library and Oasis Center, Inc. to provide college access services for the Nashville Scholars Program. 
RS3-19-1709 by virtue of Syracuse and Gilmore, appropriated $50,000 to a grant, grant contract between the National Public Library and Oasis Center, Inc., to provide services that help youth grow, thrive, and create positive change in their lives in our community, RS-2019-1710, Virtual Robertson O'Connell, approves a grant for the Nashville Convention Visitors Corporation to Metro Government to help offset expenses incurred for emergency management for the 2019 National Football League draft, RS-2019-1711 by Virtual and Roberts, approves an application for a specialized motorcycle enforcement grant from the Tennessee Highway Safety Office to the Metro Nashville Police Department to reduce the rate of fatal and serious injur injury motorcycle crashes on Tennessee roadways. RS-2019-1712 by Virtue and Roberts. Approves a grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition, the Metro National Office of Emergency Management, to fund the purchase of emergency lighting for large-scale events. RS-2019-1713 by Virtue and Roberts. Approves an application for an alcohol and impaired driving enforcement grant from the Tennessee Highway Safety Office to the Metro Police Department for the continuance of the Enhanced DUI Enforcement Initiative. RS-2019-1714 by Virtue, approves a grant from the United States Department of Justice to the Metro Nashville Police Department to purchase bulletproof vests for law enforcement personnel. RS-1715, 2019-1715 authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Risa Denberg in the amount of $175,000. <coughs> RS-2019-1716 by O'Connell and Bedney authorizes the Budge LLC DBA doing business as Music City Chicken Company to construct, install, and maintain an area encroachment at 109 2nd Avenue North. RS-2019-1770 by Bedney uh, authorizes Tootsie's Entertainment LLC to construct and install an area encroachment at 422 Broadway. RS-2019-1718 by O'Connell and Bedney authorizes Nash Rev LLC to construct and install an area encroachment at 2032 West End Avenue, RS-319-1719 by Council Member Lee, approves the election of notary publics for Davidson County. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, resolution RS-319-1722 by Council Member Allen, requests the Metro Depo Development and Housing Agency to develop an inventory of the properties participating in the project-based rental assistance program, RS-2019-1723 by Hurt, O'Connell, and others, recognize the 100th anniversary of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People Nashville Branch, RS-2019-1724 by O'Connell and Allen, recognizes the 30th anniversary of the Nashville Children's Choir, and I believe that's it. <coughs> so now I'm gonna go to committee reports. <coughs> Councilmember Vercher, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. On RS 2019, 1696, 1697, 1698, Budget and Finance recommended approval, 1340 against. On RS 2019, 1700, and 01, Budget and Finance recommended approval, 1340 against. On RS 2019, 1704, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, Budget and Finance recommended approval, 1340 against. All right, very good. Convention Tourism, Council Member Hart, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Convention Tourism and Public Entertainment Facilities voted uh, on Resolution 2019 1710, 1603, 1604, 1605, all eight in favor and zero against. I think I've got, uh, do you have 1710 on that? Yeah, that was the first one. That was the first one. Okay, sounds good. Um, health hospitals, Council Member Gilmore, you recognized. Hello. There You're we go. On. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Health hospitals and social services committee for resolution 1697, 840 against, zero not voting, recommended to the full body. Resolution 2019, 1698, 840 against, zero not voting, recommended for the full body, recommended to the full body, excuse me. Resolution 2019, 1699, uh, 840 against, zero not voted, recommended for the to the full body. Uh, resolution 2019, 1700, 840 against, zero not voting, uh, eight recommended for the uh, to the full body. Resolution 2019, 1701, 840 against, zero not voting, recommended uh, for approval to the full body. Resolution 2019, 1702, 
Eight four zero against zero not voting. Recommended uh, to the full body for approval. Resolution 2019-1703. Eight four zero against zero not voting. Recommended to the full body. This completes my report. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, I'm going to go to Parson Library. Uh, Council Member Van Rees. Yes, on uh, 1704, 1705, 1706, 1707, 1708, 1709, 1724, 1604, 1605. Uh, we voted all in favor, uh, eight in favor, zero against. In 1607, uh, we voted five in favor, zero against, with a re-referral to Parks on third reading. All right, thank you, Council Member. Um, I've got planning and zoning. I'm looking for um, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. Mike. So that would we, be helpful. we might have to make sure that I get the right ones on the right. Uh, I got you, 1716. Yep. Approved, 740 against. 1717. I, I think that's being pulled from consent. Council Member Elrod, you're recognized. I just, I just I have a question about it, so I'd like to object to it so we, I can ask it uh, on the resolution. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, Council Member Murphy? 1718 would be seven in favor, zero against. 1721 uh, is to defer one meeting. Is that on consent? 11 in favor, zero against. So 1721 was deferred one meeting? Yes. 11 in favor, zero against. Okay, okay uh, that's fine. 1722, it was approved and there is no vote on here, uh, Mr. Jameson. Seventeen twenty two was the uh, MDHA inventory of properties by Council Member Allen. I think Council Mina Johnson signed on to that one and we approved it 11 favor, zero against. All right, um, I've got public safety, Council Member Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Public safety beer and regulated beverages voted four in favor and zero against for 1710, 1711, 1712, 1713, and 1714, and that's it. That sounds good. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, you made it to your chair just in time. Public safety. Uh, I'd love to do the public safety report, but I'm not even on that. I'm committee. sorry, I'll public try. Can I? Yeah, I was going to offer. You it can to do. The um, now I don't. Yeah. I don't have the copy of the report, unfortunately, but I can tell you that all of our resolutions that were they stayed on the consent agenda, and we voted six in favor, zero against, on all of them. All right, that'd be 17, 16, 17, 17, and 17, 18. You have, right. You you have it, sir. I've got it. I just had you in the wrong committee. Uh, rules confirmation and public elections. That's Council Member Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, resolutions 2019-1719 and resolution 2019-1723 were approved six to th uh, zero with the rules committee. And with that, all the consent items being all of the committee in. Anything that is still remaining on the consent agenda, I would like to move for approval. All right, so I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded before we do anything. Council Member Elrod, did you have to pull something off of consent? Uh, resolution 1717, that was all I was asking for. I, just, I had a question on, I just wanted to take it up on its own. Thank you. All right, so you wanted to pull 1717 from the consent calendar, okay. okay. All right, so um, we have everything on the consent 
We're good. Everything on the consent agenda. Agenda we have pulled resolution RS uh, 2019 1770 from the 1717 from the consent agenda. Um, I have a motion to approve, properly seconded, on the consent agenda. Uh, all in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Consent agenda is a, adopted. Okay, so now we're going to go back. <clears throat> to resolutions that were not on the consent agenda. There are not that many of them. Um, resolution RS 2019-1685 by Council Member Vircher and Gilmore, authorized the Industrial Development Board to accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to Oliver McMillan Spectrum Emory LLC. Council Member Vircher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to uh, move for a one meeting deferral. All right, what's your uh, committee report? Uh, budget and finance recommended a one meeting deferral, okay. uh, 1340 against. All right, so there's a request, uh, a motion to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that is deferred one meeting. All right. We're now on resolution RS 2019 1717 by Council Member Bedney that was pulled um, from the consent agenda. Uh, authorizes Tootsie's Entertainment LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 422 Broadway. Council Member Bedney is coming in the door. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized on Resolution RS 2019 1717. Again, it authorizes Tootsie's Entertainment LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 422 Broadway. Council Member Bedney slowly walking to his chair. <clears throat> he is going to call for committee reports. Uh, I'm going to go to Council Member O'Connell for the Public Works Committee report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as before, we had a vote of six in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Back to Council Member Bedney. I need your committee report. I would like to ask Council Lady Kathleen Murphy to. Council Member Murphy, uh, Planning and Zoning. Um, although there were uh, questions and we are still waiting for public works and codes to get us a report back for this one, um, it was approved 11 favor, zero against. But again, we're, we're still waiting on more information from codes and public works. Thank you, Council Member Murphy. Council Member Bedney? I move to approve. Okay, I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Council Member Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. I just uh, wanted to clarify that I think there were some questions that this is not for something that was constructed during the draft. This is for a separate sign um, and encroachment that's going to be over the sidewalk. So this is not for the structure that was on the sidewalk and on Broadway during the time of the NFL draft. Correct? Correct. Okay. I just wanted to uh, confirm that. I, that's what I believe. That's what I heard. I just want to get it um, said on the record. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Um, Nobody else in the queue. Uh, there's motion properly seconded on 1717. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Resolution RS 2019-1720 by Council Member Rosenberg uh, provides amendments to the charter and sets forth a brief description of each amendment to be placed upon the ballot. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Now would be a good time to kick out the wires under your desks. Um, uh, um, <clears throat> saddened, honest, uh, honestly, that uh, we didn't get the opportunity to install a, g a good government campaign because of a, partially because of a disinformation campaign that came from specific individuals outside the council, but I'm still have faith in the body because had we had everybody here tonight, uh, that would have passed. Um, there was a lot of disinformation about ranked choice voting. It was described to me as a plot to elect Republicans. It was described, I want to get this right. It was called a, um, this is worth the wait, a uh, progressive socialist, Marxist, communist, liberal, democratic plot to elect Democrats as well. Um, so this is just kind of that second bite that we talked about earlier. I'm obviously gonna withdraw Amendment A. Um, I would like to take a, uh, a quick exercise in futility and ask for approval on Amendment B, which would only apply to the very rare special election for vice mayor and district council. The reason is that we spent three quarters of a million dollars last fall for a low turnout vice mayoral election. We would have ended up with the same result had we just done it with ranked choice voting. Um, we have an opportunity to save some money and franchise some voters since uh, voters who have mobility, uh, socioeconomic, and other issues are the ones least likely to show up for a runoff. So I'll move approval on Amendment B, please. 
All right, so let's make sure we know where we are. RS 2019-17-20, um, we're in the same process as we were before. Council Member Rosenberg has moved Amendment B. Uh, it's properly seconded. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Is, is Amendment B in the amendments package? It's called Amendment 1 in the amendment package. It's called Amendment Number 1. It is identical to what was Amendment B in 1617. Do we want to start again with a motion that moves something in the amendments package? We do. All right, so I'm going to go back to Council Member Rosenberg. Um, it sounds like we need to withdraw the, uh, your amendment to uh, pass Amendment B and instead pass Amendment 1. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move Amendment 1, which you all know as Amendment B. Okay. So, um, so the motion is to pass Amendment 1, properly seconded. Council Member Mendes, you still looking? It is page 23 of the amendment package. So I'm going to let Council Member Mendes look at it. I'm going to go to Council Member Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I think this is a very uh, measured uh, approach to ranked choice voting. Um, so I appreciate uh, Councilman Rosenberg uh, bringing this forward. So this would only apply in special elections. Is that, is that, do I have that correct? That is correct. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, special elections only for vice mayor and district council member. So this, I think, is where we have the most, uh, I think, frustrating expense um, of, you know, our metro dollars for elections that um, you know, are very small or, um, you know, I think in the, vi the previous vice mayor's race, uh, you know, it was a 10 percent uh, um, can uh, candidate that came in through a 10 percent that precipitated a um, runoff election. So, you know, while everyone deserves a vote, this preserves that and, st and preserve and, and saves a lot of dollars and, ex and funds that we need to keep in Metro. But it's but it takes the step of implementing ranked choice voting in some instances, but doesn't go at full all for all of the elections. So for I think for those that have um, issues or some concerns about ranked choice voting, um, this is a good step for us to try it out and see how it goes as a city. Uh, and I think as Councilman Rosenberg said last time that state law, um, you know, there's some, maybe some disagreement on state law that sounds like it's going to be uh, I've settled with a court case and whether or not this is legal. Um, you know, there is the savings clause that is in the uh, amendment that if this is repugnant to state law, if there's a, a bill passed that, that doesn't allow, specifically doesn't allow ranked choice voting, then this charter amendment um, would go away. But if there is even a court case that says that it is not allowed, but the legislature in turn passes legislation either next year or um, in other years going forward, then this basically kicks in and we can have ranked choice voting for just special elections for district council members and vice mayor. Um, so I think this is a good step forward for those that um, have concerns about it overall. It doesn't take the full step. So I ask uh, for you to support it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Mendes, do you have any issues to follow up? I just want to thank the sponsor for bringing this. Um, I'm in support of this. We'll vote yes. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Allen. Thank you. I just want to add to that. I, I think this one's good. Uh, it's a whole lot shorter, which for a ballot amendment, I think is going to make for a lot less confusion in the uh, in the voting box, and so I think that it's it's a much better way to introduce people to this concept. So I support it also. All right, thank you, Council Member Porterfield. Uh, I just wanted to bring notice to the information that was left on our desk from the uh, election commission. I believe we all received the second bullet point talks about voter confusion will be increased should a ballot include both ranked choice voting and traditional races. So in this case, if I understand correctly, some of the ballot will be a traditional ballot and some of the ballot will be a ranked choice ballot, which, as Mr. Roberts has stated, would increase confusion for voters. Um, so unfortunately, I will be voting against it. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I know in the past we have talked about uh, 
you know, compliance with state law, I think there are a couple of considerations to that point. One is the lack of clarity. Two is sort of the, the fail-safe provision that is included. And three is the notion that, you know, even, even in the way we consider how the state and, and local jurisdictions interact, uh, it is not always advantageous to be consistent with state law and to uh, the state regularly exercises authority to undo things that we have done that are consistent with the preferences of Nashvilleians, who I might add are also Tennesseans. But, you know, if we think about what the state constitution says, it still has a, a provision uh, that would actually allow for slavery, for instance, as a punishment for a crime. I'd be perfectly content to pass a measure saying uh, that that were not possible in Nashville, even knowing that that were inconsistent with the Constitution. There are times when the principle of an issue is important enough to do something that might be repugnant to state law when state law itself is repugnant. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Murphy. So um, I think we've I've covered my state law argument for the night, so I'll move to my other concern with this. Um, I think, as I said last time, is we are uh, one of the states that originated some of the uh, pioneer voting rights uh, lawsuits, such as Baker v. Carr, and um, the concepts of one person, one vote. Actually, at the time, it was one man, one vote, but let's go with one person, one vote. So the, the moral of my issue and concern here is that for the same office, for the same seat, we're going to hold two different types of elections? Yes, very confusing. Secondly, it's, it's a different type of election for the exact same office. And I just have a fundamental issue with that. Um, I think that for any office that is the exact same office, you should be voting on it the exact same way. Um, I understand the cost, and I understand where my colleagues are coming from that are for this, but I just really have a fundamental issue with, with the fact that if you, or at least in my district, when I look back at the voting history, quite frequently more people vote in the runoff than they do in the, in the August election in my district. And, and at the end of the day, I just feel like having separate types of elections is just not the American way for me. So I'm sorry, but I am still a no for, for that reason and for state law. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to start with thanking uh, sponsor of the, uh, this bill, uh, this amendment. I think the purpose of this charter amendment is for us to vote on it and then put on the ballot so citizens of the Davidson County can vote for it or against it. So I think even though uh, <coughs> citizens of the Davidson County may not have appetite to uh, approve amendment A, which will be ranking choice for mayor, vice mayor, at large council member, and district council member. But they may have appetite to have approved special elections such as vice mayor and district council member for the just simply uh, financial measure. So having those two, you know, things on the ballot is a good thing for the citizens of Davidson County. And just in case they, you know, decided to approve both, it's not in a conflict in this case. So I think this is a good choice, and for that, I'm uh, supporting this uh, amendment. All right, thank you, Council Member Johnson. Uh, Council Member Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I wanna, wanna applaud the, the sponsor and, and, and all his, his due diligence as it relates to just spurring this conversation um, to engage citizens um, in a democratic process. I think I stated earlier before when we had the, the, the power outage, with everything going on as it relates to voter access, voter registration, um, that's going on here in the state and just nationally for, for some of um, our most uh, vulnerable communities, I'm, I'm really, really, really sensitive um, to, to the climate and us as a body um, having this conversation with us spurring the actual conversation. I have not had not one constituent um, contact me as it relates to um, the voting process. Um, but if the sponsor can, um, and, I'm, and then I'm gonna go to what um, the Administrator of Elections, his letter to, uh, to this entire body, uh, probably was, was even more 
um, concerning, not questioning, but concerning, is when we have out-of-state interests lobbying this body um, as it relates to, to our local elections. Um, I find some, some, some pause uh, uh, in that, uh, especially when um, I don't know who these, who these entities are. I don't know if the sponsor does. The more equitable democracy, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but the, the Proteus Action League, if the sponsor can speak to who these organizations are um, and some of their uh, subsidiary affiliations, also, um, that could be quite beneficial. But I also want to uh, just, just make note um, to what uh, the administrator, and he was quite clear. Um, his letter wasn't a position of. He was just speaking um, matter-of-factly as it relates to um, the election process. His biggest challenge that he indicated was educating the voters would be the biggest challenge. And I believe I said this three, week, three, three weeks ago. Um, for many communities, for many of us, for many communities, um, when we take and we register um, some of our most vulnerable communities, the current process now um, um, can be somewhat um, in intimidating for those. And for many of us, we know when we work with um, these populations um, in our community, when it comes time for them to vote, and I'm not, this isn't a slight against the poll workers because they do a, a phenomenal job. They do a phenomenal job. Um, sometimes they don't get the best, the best help and the best, the best information. And I understand, you know, within law, they're only allowed to do and say, and say certain things. As a body, when we talk about equity and, and, and removing those systemic barriers and so forth, we have to be conscious, have a moral conscious that we're not impeding and creating additional barriers on access for some of those most vulnerable in our communities. We need to make sure when we're, when we're establishing policy, it's not for, it's not for us that, that don't have any issues with going to the polls. We know how, to, how the democratic process works. We know when we go vote for at large, we can pick five or pick three. That's, that's not for us. Um, the ranked choice voting, in my opinion, from, from my experience, from the numerous voter registration drives um, I've done, from uh, uh, taking people to the polls, from assisting and so forth, this would be an impediment um, for some of our most vulnerable in the city, and I ask you to vote against it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there was a question for Council Member Rosenberg. Do you want to respond? Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to, yeah, I appreciate those questions. Um, First of all, the only out-of-state folks I know are folks that made calls to members who uh, expressed concern about the way it's been instituted in other states. Um, so some folks who had experience with it in other cities and states that used it were asked to make contact with council members. Um, if you're concerned about education, this piece with the green pie charts on your desks outlines that. And as far as the Things that are going on at other levels of government, I would just note that the same entity that pushed what's being known as the voter suppression bill is the same entity that's trying to stop ranked choice voting. The same entity that pushed for that bill is the one who's trying to stop ranked choice voting. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to point a clarification on what someone would look at if the ballot had RCV. So we're talking about special elections only for vice mayor and district council members. I'm going to look to Mr. Jameson to make sure I'm on the right track. That's correct. Okay. So in that case, I think we actually had five of those during this term, uh, twice for District 1 and District 29 and District 33, and then for vice mayor, if, if I'm not, I hope I'm not leaving anybody out. Um, in all those cases, I believe that was the only thing on the ballot, and I'm looking again to Mr. Jameson to make sure I'm not mistaken. That's correct. We, okay, so, so by the nature of the special election, the only thing that a voter is seeing, whether they're voting for a district council person or potentially a vice mayor in a special election, they're only under one system. They would only be under this charter amendment under RCV. Is that accurate? 
Mr. James? So the, uh, you could have combined issues. In our instance, the charter provides that you have special elections depending on the duration of a vacancy. A mayor can be out 12 months, a vice mayor can be out 24 months, and district council member can be out eight months. If, it, if it's larger than that, then you go to a special election on that date. If it, can, it happens to coincide with something else, so be it, but those are, those are the time frames. Gotcha. Okay. I just wanted to make sure people were clear. We did, we've had this happen again and again, and I don't think we've had that situation. Whether you're for or against this, hopefully that will make sure that we're not creating confusion for voters that, that is, we're saying is potentially possible. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Bedney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, so I know many of you are concerned about uh, state. Uh, enforcement, but uh, looking at what happened recently over there, I think that the enforcement has been relaxed, so you guys are probably going to be, not to have to worry so much about enforcement because uh, what's happening over there seems to be uh, more relaxed. So just want to say, don't worry about that. Uh, just let, it, let the voters decide this, uh, put it on the referendum, and, and they are smart enough to make decisions about it. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pardue. Call for the question. Okay. Previous question has been called for. Uh, we're on the previous question. All in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Post no. Previous question prevails. Okay. So um, once again, we are on the board. Uh, we are voting on uh, Amendment 1. So we're not voting on the entire resolution, RS 2019 We're simply voting on Amendment 1. Okay, Madam Clerk, if you will open up the machine. Again, it requires 27 votes. Madam Clerk, uh, if you will um, close the machine, take the vote. Twenty-three in favor, six <coughs> against, one abstention. Uh, with twenty-three yes votes, um, RS um, twenty nineteen seventeen twenty fails. All right, so we're on resolution RS 2019-1721 by Council Member Vercher. Request the Metro Planning Commission and the Metro Planning Department to amend. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was trying to get ahead. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna go back to Council Member Rosenberg. Sorry, we're on RS 2019-1720. Hold on. Thank you, okay. Mr. President, and thank you all for not doing that to me by one vote. That would have been too much to take. Um, ranked choice voting was first introduced to Nashville as a charter amendment in 2003 by a Green Hills councilman. I can't remember his name right now, um, but we'll figure out who that was. Um, before we move on to Councilman Cooper's Amendment C, I forgot to ask for committee reports. All right, uh, committee report. I'm going to go to uh, Councilmember Blaylock. Yes, committee report for uh, resolution 1720 was five, four, one against. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Cooper. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vice Mayor. I will go quickly. Um, amendment C is now amendment two. I wanna thank uh, Councilman Mendez, my co-sponsor, John Cooper, Mike Jamison, the Charter Revision Committee and the Charter Revision Commission all of which voted unanimously for this, and the Finance Department and the Director of Finance, I move for approval of Amendment 2. All right, so um, Council Member Cooper has a move for passage of Amendment 2, properly seconded. Uh, back to Council Member Cooper, do you want to give a full explanation, or do you want Mr. Um, Jameson so we make sure we understand what we're voting on? Um, Mr. Jameson has been expert in his descriptions. 
uh, this would provide that in conjunction with the operating budget, the mayor would submit, uh, number one, performance metrics for departments to measure their, uh, well, their performance. In addition, he would submit uh, debt reports that include such things as the total principal amount of the debt that is then outstanding at the time of the report, a comparison of that amount to last year's amount, both in dollars and as a percentage. Uh, a statement of that debt amount in a per capita form uh, for each individual uh, in Nashville, and also a summary of the authorized but unissued GO bonds. All right, so I've got a Move proper motion, approval. proper second. Uh, Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you. Um, my question is would this in any way affect the way that we're rated in terms of our? Uh, Debt. I'm, I'm talking a little slow because it's so late at night, but uh, the way that we're rated in terms of our, our standing by being more specific? I, I, I would not think so. It should, if anything, uh, elevate, but not because the credit ratings are based on actual metrics, not the reporting thereof, but uh, I don't think it'll have an effect on the credit ratings. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other discussion? Councilmember Cooper, back to you. Move for approval. Okay, so we are on um, a motion to approve and it's amendment two. All right, again, properly seconded. Um, so um, we are again, once again, on the board. It requires 27 votes. I won't move so quick this time. Um, Madam Clerk, um, if you will um, open up the machines, we're voting on amendment two. Okay, Madam Clerk, close the machine, take the vote. <coughs> Thirty-one in favor, no, none against, no abstentions. All right, so um, that one's got thirty-one yes votes, so amendment number two passes. All right, <clears throat> any other amendments? Councilmember Gilmore. N no other amendments. I just had a quick question. We had them all grouped together at first, where we had to vote on them as a group, and we couldn't vote on them separately. And I was trying to see how, how, what made us allow for us to vote on some of these amendments separately. So there, it's separate amendments that take 27 to add to the resolution as a whole. Then you circle back and vote on the resolution as a whole, and that requires 27 as well. So you're doing the same thing here. Once all the amendments are in a final form, this resolution will be subject to a vote as a whole and require 27. Okay. I guess my only question is I didn't realize that we were doing all of, all of it seems like we're doing some of them twice. I thought it was just going to be one time. And I, I guess my, I'm just trying to make sure I understand the process. What allows for us to do those same rep resolutions, even though they're represented by a different number, how are we able to vote on these again? It was my understanding. Right. So that, that may have been a strategic decision by the sponsors who, in the original version of the resolution, perhaps a sponsor of one amendment thought you voted against the whole thing because of a second amendment. So if he got it in there alone, maybe you would support it. I'm speculating as to what be, may be motivating the strategy. But these amendments that you're voting on now are verbatim identical to what you considered previously, and that's why they don't have to go back before the Charter Revision Commission. They've all been considered by that commission in one form or another. All right, thank you. You answered my question. Sorry. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Rosenberg. Council Member Blaylock. I would like to introduce Amendment one or four, four. which is which one is yeah. four, is which was E. Four. Okay, so it's Amendment four. So there's a motion to approve Amendment four. Correct. Okay, properly seconded. Um, Council Member Blaylock, I'm going to go back to you either for an explanation or I'll turn to Mr. Jameson. Once again, this is the school board voting to get it in line with this state law. Okay. 
So um, questions about Amendment 4. All right, seeing none, we are voting on Amendment 4. It's again been properly moved, properly seconded. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you will open up the machines, we're voting on Amendment 4. Madam Clerk, if you will uh, close the machine, take the vote. Thirty-one in favor, none against, no abstentions. Okay. So with thirty-one votes, Amendment Four passes. Right now, Councilmember Mendes. I, th I think Mr. Jamison might have just been talking about this. Some somehow, I guess, before we take the final vote, um, the actual resolution has to be amended to get rid of the amendment a language and that's amending the resolution so he can have to suspend the rules to do that i think he says he's withdrawing amendment a i'm looking to him and uh in the course of that allowing amendments two and four that's my understanding <laughs> it's six of one or half dozen of the other but i think that's appropriate uh uh, but Amendment A is like actually in the resolution. Correct. So we're just going to say he's a, he's withdrawing it. That's fine. It's late. That's fine. Councilmember Rosenberg, what do you want to do? Move to withdraw A, please. Okay. So there's a motion to withdraw Amendment A. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment A is withdrawn. All right, so we are now on resolution RS 2019-1720. It's been amended with Amendment 2 and Amendment 4. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, and, and I'm just asking questions for my own clarity. Now, why was it that they didn't have to be listed separately in here when we went through them as numbers? If somebody could just speak to that quickly. Why is it just the whole resolution of 1720? So and we these, just walk through each one. So uh, amendments two and four were submitted as amendments by the individual sponsors as a, as a separate amendment to this. They were not included in the original resolution as they did in 1617. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Any other questions? Council Member Mendez. I just want to be clear about what he did there um, for the record, because I don't want to see this on the ballot. Um, what, what, what we mean by withdrawing Amendment A is striking Section 3 of the, the resolution. That is correct. All right, thank you. All right. All right, we are on RS 2019, 1720. Again, um, the two amendments that are on are Amendment 2 and Amendment 4. Any other amendments? Any other discussion? All right, so we will be voting again. Um, we have voted on Amendment 2, got 27 votes plus, and Amendment number 4 got 27 votes plus. Just like we did before, we are now voting on the entire resolution which also requires 27 votes. Councilmember Gilmore. And I'm very clear, but just because they were letters and now they're numbers, just for the voting or just for the viewing audience, two dealt with the fiscal, um, right. more accountability there, just the way we worded it. And then the last was bringing in line um, what we have at the state with the city and we now do the appointments for the school board members. That's correct. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, seeing nobody else in the queue, we are ready to vote. 
We're voting on RS 2019-1720 as amended. Madam Clerk, if you will open up the machines. Madam Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. Thirty in favor, none against, one abstention. All right, so RS 2019-1720 with 30 votes passes. All right, before I move on, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. You got it. All right, good. All right. Thank you for hanging with us. All right, so we're now on resolution RS 2019-1721 by Council Member Vercher. Um, request the Metro Planning Commission and the Metro Planning Department to amend Chapter 2 of the adopted subdivision regulations to require community meetings prior to approval of concept plans or prior to approval of final plans um, when no concept plan is required. Council Member Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for one. Uh, let me get committee report. All right, who's got it? Council Member Murphy or Council Member Bedney? Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. This is on RS 2019-1721. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. You want to do it or is it a... All right, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Okay. Um, the committee recommended a one meeting deferral, 11-4-0 against. All right. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for a one meeting deferral. All right. Motion is to defer one meeting. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion to defer one meeting is adopted. All right. We are now on bills on first reading. Uh, if uh, there is one bill that needs to be pulled off of first reading, uh, it's my understanding it's BL 2019-1616 by Council Member Vercher and O'Connell. Uh, Council Member Vercher, I'm going to recognize you. You're moving fast, Vice Mayor. Sorry. <laughs> Which one is it, BL? This is BL 2019-1616. Oh yes, um, <laughs> I need to. Uh, I need to move for uh, uh, one meeting deferral. All right. So uh, BL 2019-1616 um, is going to be pulled off of consent. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, pulled off of uh, bills on first reading, and will be put on the. Uh, the motion is to defer it to the next um, meeting. Proper motion, proper second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. No, um, 1616 is pulled off of first reading and will be on uh, the next calendar. All right, with that having been done, yeah. um, we also have, do you want me to go ahead and put them, put them on? We're just going to pass them and then bring them on late. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, bills on introduction, first reading, with the exception of BL 2019-1616. There's no objection. We'll consider all those ordinances on first reading in one vote at this time. Is there a motion to approve? Properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Um, bills on introduction, first reading are passed. We have two late filed bills. Uh, that need to be considered. Uh, late ordinances uh, by Council Member Hastings. Uh, these are um, two measures. Let's do them. Um, can they be taken at the same time or are they two different measures? They're two separate. They're two separate measures. Uh, so, Council Member Hastings, I'm going to recognize you uh, for the first one is a zoning change. Um, changes 3.28 acres from IWD to MUG zoning for properties located at Cumberland Bend, Council Member Hastings. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, we went before the Rules Committee today asking to move this forward. Um, during the time that uh, 
the process of us getting this approved. I was actually out of town with the death of my aunt. So uh, we are, we're looking to move this forward, uh, to go forward for the readings so they can be on schedule. All right, Council Member Lee, uh, rules take this up. Yes, sir, we did, and they agreed to uh, agree to have it. Yeah. So, Council Member Hastings, um, on the first measure, you'll need to suspend the rules. Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, we would ask for suspension of the rules. Okay, so there's a motion to suspend the rules to take up um, a late filed ordinance on first reading. Any objection? Okay, seeing none, um, let's take up the other one and then we'll vote on one at the same time as we get them through first consideration. Um, the next one is changes 1.96 acres from R8 to SP zoning for properties located at 2127 Buena Vista Pike and Goodrich Avenue, unnumbered at the terminus of Alpine Avenue and Goodrich Avenue, permit 27 multifamily residential units. Councilmember Hastings, you're recognized. Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, I would like to move to, for the suspension of the rules after going before the Rules Committee today. All right, let me get the report from Council Member Lee. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, the committee also agreed to go along with this. All right, thank you. All okay. right, so the motion is to uh, suspend the rules. A motion to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension of the rules to consider this one on first consideration? Seeing none, okay, so we are now on two late filed ordinances, uh, which we need to consider on first um, reading. Um, do you want to make that motion to approve on first reading? Yes, sir. Mr. Okay. Vice Mayor, we'll make the motion to approve on first reading. All right, so we've got two measures. Both of them have been approved through the suspension. Um, proper second. Any objections, any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Those two late filed ordinances are passed on first reading. Thank you. Okay, we are now on bills on second reading. Um, Substitute Bill tw BL 2019-1518 by Council Member O'Connell. Uh, this amends the Metro, car re Metro Code regarding booting services. Um, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I know there is still some work being done on this. Uh, with the Transportation Licensing Commission, I'd like to move to defer one meeting, please. All right, let's get committee reports um, on it, public uh, reports. Did we need committee reports? I believe I believe we did this because of previous deferral. All been approved. Okay, you're fine, Councilmember O'Connell. So you move to defer how long? One meeting. One meeting. So the motion is to defer one meeting. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. Bill 2019-1543 by Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, this amends the Metro Code to prohibit panhandling in certain locations. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, committee reports, please. All right, that's public safety. Council Member Roberts. Council Member Gilmore. I was in the committee and we moved to defer at the request of the sponsor. Okay, so the motion, uh, so uh, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request uh, deferral for two meetings, please. Okay. Motion is to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Motion is to defer uh, two meetings. Uh, BL 2019-1598 by Council Member O'Connell, Roberts and others amends the uh, Metro Code to establish a fleet schedule for low or zero emission vehicles owned by Metro Government. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm, no, I'm not sure if it's possible to do this. We could potentially take all three of these bills together at the request of departments in all, all three cases. I, my, I think in all, all referred committees have, uh, have honored this request that is, I consider, a friendly departmental request to defer for one meeting. If possible, we can do all three bills and move to defer one meeting. If not, we can take them separately. Let's take separate. them all together. So I just did 1598, 1599. Uh, O'Connell, Roberts, and others amends the Metro Code to create green building standards for buildings owned by Metro and sustainable building design standards for new and renovated Metro government buildings and facilities. And BL 2019-1600, O'Connell, Roberts, and others amends the Metro Code to establish renewable energy standard for Metro government. All right, so let's get committee reports on 1598 first. Budget and Finance, Council Member Vercher. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Do you want me to go ahead and just give all three since we're taking them all at that, once? That'd be fine. Okay, at the request of the sponsor, Budget and Finance recommended a one meet, one meeting deferral for uh, 1598, 1599, 1600, 1340 against. All right. Um, codes, I'm going to go to Council Member Swope. Codes, Fairs, and Farmers Market Committee on 1599 deferred for one meeting per the sponsor's request, 440 against. All right. And back to you, Council Member O'Connell, for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. Public Works, we also recommended uh, one meeting deferral. Uh, I believe that was maybe eight in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member. So um, the motion is to defer uh, these three measures, 1598, 1599, and 1600, defer one meeting. That's They're correct. all properly seconded. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <coughs> and I would just ask Council Member uh, O'Connell, what was the reason for the deferral specifically um, that the department stated? Specifically, they had some feedback. I've been working with the departments and making sure that their feedback is incorporated into the associated amendments. They requested the deferral uh, to be able to review those amendments and then prepare a proper fiscal note for all three. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, so the motion is to defer uh, these three measures. Uh, one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Post no. Um, all three measures are deferred one meeting. <coughs> uh, BL 2019-1601 by Council Member Rosenberg. Um, amends the Metro Code relative to contracts for government relations and lobbying services. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. Right, Budget and Finance. Council Member Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval as amended, 13-4-0 against. All right. Uh, and uh, education, who has got the education report? Council Member Weiner, education. Education voted on BL 2019-1601, 740 against. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. In a nutshell, this bill says that we're not going to pay lobbyists to lobby against us. Um, I think there's probably a little debate that the bill with the greatest fiscal impact to the legislature this year was the voucher bill. And Nashville as a city has spoken pretty forcefully against vouchers. Uh, in addition to Council, Ladies, uh, Council Lady Haywood's uh, resolution opposing the bill, uh, resolution uh, uh, opposing the voucher bill that passed unanimously. Uh, in 2013, Councilman Glover sponsored one that passed unanimously. In 2011, former council member Karen Johnson sponsored one that passed unanimously. The school board has passed resolutions in opposition in 2019, 27, 2011, and beyond. And this year, all 14 of Davidson County's state legislators opposed it. Uh, voucher opposition in general is pretty widespread in Tennessee. In the last statewide poll, it had 29% support. And this bill's bad was, this year's bill was so bad, so insidious, that opponents and proponents got up on the floor and repeatedly demanded assurance that their counties, their districts, would not be affected by this bill. Um, and in fact, it took a promise that it would not impact a member's bill to get him to change his vote. Um, as far as the lobbying power, it's pretty asymmetrical. Uh, the pro-lobbying groups had at least 30 pro-voucher lobbyists this year, while we had a small handful of effective but limited lobbyists to reach 100, 132 legislators and the governor. Um, our current lobbyists, we pay $1.1 million, a flat fee to lobby on our behalf, but instead they lobbied against us. Uh, they lobbied against us. They left us with nobody on the Metro payroll lobbying for us, speaking for us, and we lost by one vote. This bill simply states that in the future, if you're gonna lobby for that issue, you're not going to lobby for us. You got to decide whether you're with us or against us. Um, so I'd like to move approval and also move an amendment, which just cleans up some language. It says that we'll take 90 days before terminating a contract to make sure we can get someone else in place. Um, and I'll also note that this does not affect our current contract. We won't be messing with anything that we've already signed. So I'd like to move approval of the amendment first. Okay, so there's motion to approve the amendment properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Gilmore? Nothing, okay. Council Member Weiner. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, at the face of it, I appreciate the notion, and I had asked some questions yesterday of the administration insofar as our ability to bring our own lobbyist on, on staff for Metro. Um, and, and what led me to that question was this, and, and I'm gonna pose this question to the administration if that's okay. Um, what happens if we are interviewing when it comes time to re-up a contract and every single lobbyist that we interview has some sort of conflict in that they already have contracted to lobby for something that we perceive to be anti-metro. What happens? Mr. Mr. Cooper. Uh, we would either do it in-house, well, I think it would be a combination of in-house and relying on the existing relationships we have with TML and with the um, lobbyist that represents the big four cities. That's all I needed and, to know. Thank you. Or a, I mean, we could request one of the bidders to um, drop a client. Um, so we would have recourse. We would have options. We wouldn't be left out in the cold. Right. We would we would find a way to um, have representation on the Hill. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Murphy. Just real quick, as a former contract lobbyist, um, and both of my parents are contract lobbyists, for this amount of money, they, we, sh we should have absolutely no problem finding someone to represent us, and we should have absolutely no problem finding someone who is willing to take no conflicts. Um, this price is, uh, now I, with all due respect um, to, to our current lobbyists and things like that, this price is, uh, wow, uh, wow. So with that, I will, uh, I'll renew the motion. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Murphy. Um, Council Member Rosenberg, any final comments? We're on your motion. We're on the amendment, correct? All right, Council Member Rosenberg. Um, I've got um, Mr. Cooper that would like to respond and then also the other Mr. Cooper. So let me go to the legal Mr. Cooper first and then I go to uh, Councilman Cooper. I just wanted to clarify the amount is flat fee for five years at both the state and federal level. So that's not an annual amount or just for one state versus federal, it's both. All right, thank you. Council Member Cooper. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Cooper. Um, just to go over that again, the 1.1 million is over five years or it's not an annual fee, it's over five years. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Thank you, Council Member. All right, back to you, Council Member Rosenberg. Uh, Re-up uh, re the motion to adopt the amendment, please. All right, so uh, we are on the uh, adoption of the amendment, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The amendment is adopted. Council Member Rosenberg, you're back on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move approval. Got a motion, proper second. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I, I'm pretty clearly in favor of the spirit of the bill. I guess I would ask Mr. Jamison just, or, or maybe the sponsor can speak to this as well. It's hard for me to imagine this, but I wonder if there are any circumstances where um, the, you know, there, there would be a special circumstance under this where the diversion of funding could create an exception uh, for a favorable purpose or for some temporary scenario that was actually you know, necessary for some reason, apart from, uh, I think, the, the legislative circumstances that led to this. And I don't know if that is, you know, if we would have, uh, how this would work in a circumstance where we were actually asking the lobbyists to do something that um, could be legally interpreted as a diversion of funding. I'm not aware of any scenario where that's envisioned. Um, uh, maybe there could be something, but I'm not, I'm okay. not thinking of anything. Very good, thanks. Thank you, Council Member. Um, Council Member Rosenberg, any last comments? No, thank you. Move approval. All right. So I got a motion to approve as amended. We are on BL 2019 1601 as amended. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on second reading. Bill 2019-1602 by Council Member Mendez. Amends the Metro Code regarding annual debt reports to the Metro Council. 
Council Member Mendez. Committee report, please. All right, uh, Council Member Vercher, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended uh, 1340 against approval as amended. All right, thank you. Uh, rules, Council Member Lee. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Uh, rules approved as amended, because there was an amendment put on this, five to zero to approve. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Mendez. I'd like to move the amendment eight at page 48 of the amendments package. All right, Council Member Mendez moves the amendment properly seconded. Council Member Mendez for an explanation. Uh, so the, the bill, um, well, the amendment just does some cleanup requested by finance. The bill as amended would basically update the ordinance that requires an annual debt service report from Metro Finance. For the last several years, uh, Ms. Lomax O'Neill has been providing more information than the ordinance requires. This would update the ordinance to match the level of information we're getting. So off into the future, um, we'll keep getting the information we have been getting. All right, so the motion is on the amendment first, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Council Member Mendez, you're back on your bill as amended. Move bill as amended. There's a motion, proper second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, your bill as amended is adopted on second reading. Bill 2019-1603 by Council Member O'Connell provides the designation of public property within specified areas of downtown Nashville as a temporary special event zone during the time period beginning at 6 o'clock a.m. on June 5, 2019 and ending at midnight on June 10, 2019 in conjunction with the 2019 CMA Fest and related activities and events. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Our committee reports, please. All right. Council Member Hurt, Convention Tourism. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Convention Tourism and Public Entertainment Facilities Committee voted in favor 8 4 0 against. All right. Council Member O'Connell, back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. All right. So the motion to approve, properly seconded. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. It's getting uh, late, so I will be quick. Uh, the special event. Special event zoning, it brought back some memories. I just wanted to ask a sponsor of the bill, does this uh, special event zone involve the removal of the cherry trees? <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember O'Connell, do you have any comment to that? I, I, I hope as, as my colleague understands that that was actually not a provision itself of the uh, previous legislation that we've considered for any of these zones. And I think the real intent is to deliver uh, what we saw with the NFL draft, which is an area uh, that really does promote public safety for having 600,000 people here recently and knowing how many of the CMA Fest is likely to attract. I think Nashville has demonstrated through the use of this tool that we can uh, deliver world-class events safely. Um, I, I do think it is perhaps worth, um, you know, some additional scrutiny of the footprint zone of, of such events in the future. And I think we've all uh, learned that lesson. But I'm not, I'm not <coughs> specifically concerned that that this that this bill would have any such impact. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Allen. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just I'm just wondering if there is a cost for security involved with doing this, and if so, should this also go before the Budget and Finance Committee and and have a fiscal report as well? Councilmember O'Connell, I am probably not the person best equipped to speak with that, but I do think that is an excellent question, and I would I would be perfectly content to refer this to uh, Budget and Finance on third reading so that we could address that question. All right, so is your motion to approve and refer it to budget and finance? Yes, I would like to update my motion to do that, please. Okay, so properly seconded. Uh, anything else, Council Member Allen? Okay, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just had some questions uh, related to the area of the special event zone and uh, multimodal issues. I think we've seen in the midst of special events, uh, like the NFL draft and several prior that the Ascend um, uh, Riverfront Greenway is often uh, closed. And uh, I, I know for the NFL event, uh, the boarding of the, uh, the star train was uh, kind of displaced further back from the station and so forth. So I just wondered 
um, if you could speak to the mobility issues as it relates to special event zone. Are we making an effort to make sure that the greenway stays open and that train service is not uh, disrupted or that boarding is not displaced? Thank you. Councilmember O'Connell. Sure. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Henderson. That's, that's a great question. And in fact, I am awaiting further information from Metro Parks. I think most of the um, people who had been attempting to use the Greenway through Ascend that I heard from were actually particularly frustrated that the Greenway was closed outside of the schedule of the event zone. Uh, in fact, for days both before and after the scheduled closures for the NFL draft, uh, the Greenway piece was closed. And I'm, I'm, I actually have two separate inquiries into parks and I'm awaiting response from their Greenways coordinator uh, as to why that was the case, because there were no other events that should have closed that. Um, yeah, I, to that end, though, um, you know, if it would be useful or helpful to getting more information, I'd be happy again to uh, re-refer this uh, to parks and libraries if we if we want to do that uh, for third reading. Councilmember Henderson, that would be great. Thank you. All right, I will. I will. Update my motion now uh, for a second time to uh, move approval and refer to budget, both budget and finance as well as parks, libraries, and arts. Any place else you want to send it? Uh, um, theoretically, to answer Council Member Henderson's concerns, we could send it to traffic, parking, and transportation, but I don't know how often we go comes to that meeting anyway, but uh, right. that would be let's an option. Just, let's just stick with the other two. Um, all right, so we've got a uh, motion to approve uh, on second, we're on 1603, and re refer to, um, to budget and to parks. All right, so that's the motion, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no, you adopt. All right, so we're now on BL 2019-1604 by Council Member O'Connell, Virtue, and others. Approves the execution of an amended and restated agreement with respect to the development and operation of the Museum of African American Music, Art, and Culture. Uh, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, Budget and Finance, Council Member Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 13-4-0 against, with a re-referral back to Budget and Finance. All right, Council Member Hart. Uh, convention and Tourism. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Conventions, Tourism, and Public Entertainment Facilities Committee voted in favor, eight, four, and zero against, with the recommendation that the appropriate name of the museum is bared in the original uh, legislation, and it's the National Museum of African American Music. All right. Thank you. So I, we didn't know if we needed to make that as an amendment uh, to to change the name or not, or if this was just a caption of. So we're checking. We could um, we can fix it on third reading. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, Parks and Library Council Member Van Rees. Uh, committee voted eight in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I guess let me check in with Mr. Jamison. Uh, do we need to uh, come in with an amendment to that effect, or can that be done administratively to update the name to be correct? We have a couple of different options. This is amendable on third because it's part of an economic development Great. package. It's probably be the easiest. Let's just plan to do that, and uh, I would like to move the bill uh, with a re-referral to budget and finance. All right, so the motion is to uh, move the bill and re-refer to budget and finance. Properly seconded, Council Member Gilmore. Yes, I was asking, what is the reason for the re-referral? Council Member O'Connell. I, I will leave that up to the Chair of Budget and Finance if, uh, and be happy to yield my time to her. Council Member Vercher. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Uh, yesterday um, in, in budget and finance, um, it was spirited conversation as it relates to, to this legislation. There, are, there will be some proposed amendments um, as it relates uh, to this bill, so we want to make sure that we re-refer it back. Um, there were also some questions 
um, that was submitted yesterday by um, committee members, and I don't have an update um, as to whether those uh, uh, questions um, have been answered that was submitted by those respective uh, committee members. Uh, Councilwoman Gilmore, yesterday uh, we discussed this at length in committee. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilmember Gilmore. Okay, I, I just wanted to be clear. I think it was the one that Councilmember um, Mendez had a couple of questions as it related to, if you could just speak to that, I just wanna make sure what we are referring in vote. Councilmember Mendez. Thanks. Um, there are multiple amendments to uh, the resolution and these two bills um, that uh, things I've asked for to be changed in the couple hundred pages of contracts. Um, and uh, at least I, for one, want to see them in budget and finance rather than having to deal with it on the floor on a Tuesday night. All right. Thank you, Council Member. All right. So we're back to uh, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, your motion is to approve on second reading and re refer it back to budget. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, and I would renew that motion. All right. So again, that's a, um, a motion properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion is adopted. All right, we're on, now on BL 2019-1605 by virtue of Syracuse and Gilmore. This was approved by the Planning Commission, approves a sublease for property located at the corner of Broadway and Fifth Avenue North from Oliver McMillan Spectrum Emory LLC to Metro Government to be used as a museum celebrating African American music. Um, so uh, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance recommended approval with the re-referral 1340 against, and this bill is in the same vein as the previous uh, legislation that we just discussed as it relates to re-referring it back to Budget and Finance and the committee reports. All right, thank you. Convention Tourism, Council Member Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Convention's Tourism and Public Entertainment Facilities Committee voted in favor, 8 4 and 0 against. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Murphy, uh, Planning and Zoning. Planning and Zoning voted to approve with a re referral to planning. 10 in favor, 0 against. All right. Um, Council Member Van Rees for Parks. Uh, parks, uh, Libraries, and Arts voted uh, 8 in favor, 0 against. All right. Back to you, Council Member Vercher. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I move for approval with a re referral back to budget and finance. All right. Um, so the motion is to uh, approve with a re referral back to budget and finance. Uh, it sounds like planning also wanted it referred back to them. Council Member Murphy, I'm looking at you. All right. Council Member Vercher, is that okay? Yeah. Uh, a re uh, move for approval with a re referral back to budget and finance and to planning, zoning, and historical. Okay. Uh, so that's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're now on BL 2019-1607 by Council Members Pulley and Syracuse. Relinquishes Metro Government's interest in a parcel of real estate formerly comprising part of the Green Hills Branch Library and Archives. Council Member Pulley. Hold on, there you are. Jan? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. All right. Uh, Parks and Library, Council Member Van Rees. Uh, yes, we voted uh, five in favor, zero against, with a request for re referral to Parks on third. Um, okay. And uh, Council Member Murphy, you got this one? We're on 1607, planning and zoning. Eight in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, back to you, Council Member Pulley. I would move approval. Okay. So there's a request to re refer it back to Parks and Library. Are you okay? Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure that's necessary. I talked to the uh, council member who had expressed that concern and uh, I think we've got that worked out. Uh, council member Henderson. That's correct, I appreciate that. But if uh, the, the sponsor could just for the community's benefit um, express what this parcel is um, as sure. it has been one of concern and question in Green Hills for quite a many years, thank you. All right, sure. Council Member Pulley. Happy to explain that. What this is is a, a piece of a parcel. Uh, I think there's a, um, maybe a misunderstanding that it's the entire archives uh, building where the old Green Hills Library uh, existed. And uh, this is a, a sliver of a parcel that's, uh, uh, the majority of that building is already owned by uh, an individual. 
And uh, this sliver is between that and the parking lot that's adjacent to it. So uh, uh, I've talked with the library people, talked to Ken Oliver, and it's uh, already uh, been made available to all Metro departments and nobody is interested in it because it's such a small piece. So uh, with that, uh, I would just move that we approve this. All right, so I got a motion to approve. Uh, Council Member Van Rees. Yes, I, I'm sorry. Um, there were five votes for a referral to Parks, and even though you spoke with one of us, um, and now two of us, I think that on behalf of the entire uh, committee, it still needs to refer back to Parks. So, uh, Council Member Pulley, you wanted to make that motion. Okay, uh, I'll do that then. I uh, would move approval on uh, the second reading, and uh, we could, I could move to re-refer re it to Parks. All right. So the motion is to uh, pass on second, re-refer to park properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed no, you adopt. Thank you, Council Member Pulley. Um, BL 2019-1608, Council Member Allen, Bedney, and others abandoned this portion of alley number 952 and alley number 970 right of way. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right. So um, planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. We're on. Uh, Eight in favor, zero against. Okay. Uh, Public Works, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. We passed it. Eight in favor, zero against. All right. Traffic and parking, Council Member Hager. Uh, pass three, four, zero again. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval. Move approval. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Opposed no. You adopt. Bill 2019-1609 by Council Member Bedney, O'Connell, and Hager. Abends alley number 1144 right of way in Eastman. Council Member Bedney, this is a uh, very important right of way in Eastman. I couldn't agree more, mm -hmm. uh, and I moved to approve. All right. Do you want some committee reports? That'd be great. You want to give your own, or do you want yeah. Council Member Murphy to give it? I'm relying on Council Member Murphy. All right. Eight in favor, zero against. All right. Council Member O'Connell, Public Works. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd prefer not to say, but I, I am compelled to, and we voted eight in favor, zero against. All right. Council, uh, traffic and parking, Council Member Hager. Three, four, zero again. All right. Back to you, Council Member Bedney. Move to approve, please. All right. Motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, BO 2019-1610 by Council Member Bedney, O'Connell, and Hager. Bans a portion of Bighorn Drive right of way. Uh, Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Uh, committee report, please. All right, Council Member Murphy, 1610. Eight in favor, zero against. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. We were reluctant to abandon any of Bighorn Drive, but we voted eight in favor, zero against. All right. Council Member Hager, traffic and parking. Three, four, zero again. All right. Council Member Bedney. Move to approve, please. Motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We are now on bills on third reading. All right. So we are on BL 2019-1464 by Council Member Scott Davis. This was disapproved by the Planning Commission. Six to zero on 228-2019. Uh, changes 0.20 acres from SPR to RM15A zoning for property located at 1218 Montgomery Avenue. Council Member Scott Davis. Uh, committee reports, please. All right, so it looks like a committee report is in, which is recommended for indefinite deferral by the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee. I thought my letter was to um, defer, defer it for two meetings. Um, yeah, I know we had a meeting in between there. Uh, I am fine with the deferral. Okay, so you want to defer how many meetings? Um, so the recommendation was for an indefinite deferral by planning and zoning. What's your motion? My motion was to at the time, defer, defer for two meetings. So the motion is to defer two meetings. Is there any objection? Uh, I've got a second. Got an indefinite deferral. Binding, and then when it comes back to the next meeting, it's the fight between him and the. I can't even defer my bill. Okay. If there's no objection, I'd like. 
Yes. Okay. All right. So the motion is to defer two meetings. It's properly seconded. Council Member O'Connell. I might be misremembering this, but I could have sworn the letter was to defer indefinitely in committee. Uh, well, so the recommendation for the Planning and Zoning Committee, the recommendation was from before. It was an indefinite deferral by Planning and Zoning. Um, Council Member Bedney? Yeah, I don't even know why we are having this conversation. We already made a recommendation. If right. he wants to uh, ignore the recommendation, he needs to suspend the rules or something, right? So uh, the recommendation for Planning and Zoning was... It's late. We'll go ahead and defer indefinitely. All I can right. always go back to the clerk. No problem. All right, so the motion is to defer indefinitely. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is to defer indefinitely. Substitute Bill 2019-1526 by Council Member Murphy amends the uh, Metro Code to require the display of certain signage if towing and relative to the towing of unauthorized vehicles. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. We have a technical correction amendment for this, and so I'd like to move the amendment. And I think I need to suspend the rules to do that, you do but it wasn't the on the rules. agenda, so I put it on the agenda for rules. All right. So it is um, it's a proposed amendment in order to get it in front of us because this bill is on third reading. You would need to suspend the rules. Any objections to suspension of the rules? Let me look at Council Member Lee just before I do that to see if there's any concerns from the Rules Committee? No, the committee voted to, well, the committee agreed to allow. All right. Um, Council Member Bedney on the suspension. I've got you listed here. From before. Okay, thank you. All right, so any objections to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, Council Member Murphy, you're on your amendment. Great. Um, this amendment, like I said, is just a technical correction. What it does is it fixes a typo and it clarifies that the um, when an aggressive towing company uh, wrongfully tows a car, the Traffic and Parking Commission um, can have them uh, refund to the property or to the car owner, but then also they have to pay a fine to the Metro government. So uh, with that, I move approval of the amendment. All right, so the motion is to approve the amendment properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Gilmore. I think it's a good bill. I just want to be clear. Is it an either or for the towing company or do they have to do both? Council Member Murphy. So this can go. So basically when a consumer is towed uh, wrongfully, they can take it to the Traffic and Parking <coughs> Commission and um, the Traffic and Parking Commission can have them pay the, uh, the, the car owner back and make them pay the $50 fine. Because again, this is going to be it. This potentially could be increasing more cases uh, to the Traffic and Parking Commission. This came to me, as you may remember, a constituent from Council Lady Johnson's district was wrongfully towed twice in a two-month period or three-month <coughs> period from a lot that she had uh, a parking permit in. And I think all of us have had multiple conversations with constituents over the last four years about the aggressive towing industry. And this is just one way that we have been able to figure out to get back um, and, and cut down on that abusiveness. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you. I think it's a great bill. I'm just trying to see though, does the commission, is it a must that the that they would order them to pay it back or is it optional? That's the piece I'm Well, not... if you want to pull it up in the amendment pack, I'm more than happy to read it. I read it. Out. I just wanted clarity. Is it optional or is it a must? That's all I'm just trying to see. Shall. It's, it's, it's must okay. shall. Council Member Murphy. If a licensee tows an authorized vehicle in violation of this section, the licensee shall provide a full refund to the vehicle owner or operator for any towing fee paid, plus a $50 fine to be paid to the Metro government. Whether a violation of this section has occur occurred shall be determined by the Metro Traffic Licensing Commission. Council Member Gilmore. Mr. Jamison, can you clarify for me, please? It's, it's, both. Both. it's, it's not an option. It's both. Thank you. All right. Um, Council Member Murphy. With that, I move approval. Second. All right. So have we passed the amendment? Uh, not yet. All right. All right. So we are on the amendment on BL 2019-1526. We need to pass that first. Um, motion is to approve the amendment. 
Any other discussion? We're on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Councilmember Murphy, you're on your substitute bill as amended. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> move the bill as amended. Okay. So the motion is to move the bill as amended. This is on third reading. It's a substitute bill. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute bill 2019-1526 as amended is passed on third reading. Bill 2019-1529 by Council Member Scott Davis changes 0.39 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 1603 Lutton Street. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. I believe all committee reports are in. It is. Let's move for approval. Okay, motion is to approve. This is on third reading. Um, proper motion, proper seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, Bill 2019-1529 is adopted on third reading. Bill 2019-1533 by Council Member Scott Davis uh, changes 0.17 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 311 Gatewood Avenue to permit all uses of the RS5 zoning district and a detached accessory dwelling unit. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I believe all committee reports are in. All committee reports are in. Move for approval. Motion is to approve on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, 1533 is adopted on third reading. Bill 2019 1537, this is a disapproved bill by the Planning Commission. Changes 0.18 acres from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 327 Gatewood Avenue. Council Member Scott Davis, you're recognized. <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to. Um, um, uh, committee reports, please. Committee report? Yes. Uh, referred to planning. Uh, Council Member Murphy. Defer one meeting, 11 in favor, zero against. Council Member Davis. Please defer, please. Okay. Uh, defer one meeting. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, deferral at one meeting, properly uh, seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the the uh, bill is deferred one meeting. Uh, bill 2019-1541 by Council Member Kendall. This was approved by the Planning Zoning Historical Committee. Changes 1.55 acres from CS and IR to SP zoning for properties located at 500, 502, 504, 506, and 508, 28th Avenue North and 510 27th Avenue North to permit an office building. D is somebody taking on his bill? No. <coughs> So that would be deferred one meeting. Bill 2019-1560 by Councilmember Vircher amends the Metro Code relative to the Workforce Development Program. Councilmember Vircher. I am here and accounted for your grace. All right. With all committee Thank reports you. in, I move for approval. Second. Thank you, Councilmember Vircher. Um, proper motion, proper seconded, proper, proper, properly seconded. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, Bill 2019-1561, Council Member Bedney adopts pro uh, property identification maps for Metro Government, which will be the official maps for the identification of real estate for tax assessment purposes. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to approve. Uh, motion is to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Uh, Bill 2019-1562 by Council Members Bedney and O'Connell. All committee reports are in. Authorizes Metro Government to accept permanent temporary easements for the Richmond Drive Stormwater Improvement Project for 14 properties located on Richmond Drive, Inglewood Court, and Haysboro Avenue. Council Member Bedney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to approve. There's a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Uh, Bill 2019-1563 by Council Member Sledge and Bedney. All committee reports are in. Authorizes Metro Government to accept a new fire hydrant assembly for property located at 603D Hamilton Avenue. Council Member Sledge, is that you? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, approval. So a motion to approve, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Opposed, no. You adopt on third reading. Bill 2019-1564, by Sledge, Bedney, and O'Connell, all committee reports are in. Authorizes Metro government to abandon the utility easement and to accept a new water main, a fire hydrant assembly, and easement for property located at 1119 12th Avenue South. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, move approval. Motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1565, by Council Member Bedney. All committee reports are in, abandons in this existing public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manhole and easements, and to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for four properties located on Spruce Street and 21st Avenue North. Council Member Bedney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to approve. Motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Those no, you adopt. Bill 2019-1566 by Swo, Bedney and O'Connell. All committee reports are in. Authorize the Metro government to acquire permanent and temporary easements and acceptance for the Swiss Avenue Water Storage Infrastructure Improvement Project for property located at 1203 Pine View Lane. Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Thank you, my lord. <coughs> Sorry, had to. I'm power watching uh, Game of Thrones. I understand. We all are doing that. <laughs> Move approval. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, John Snow, I believe. All right, so uh, it's a proper motion, properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Murphy. I just, as we're in going into budget time and I've started to notice on some of these, this is something where we're doing a permanent and temporary easement, yada, yada, all of that, which is, we do this all the time, but there's no fiscal note. I mean, these projects have to have a fiscal note. At some point, we can't just keep voting on things without fiscal notes. So that was my soapbox, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Murphy. Council Member Bedney, do you have a soapbox? You have to uh, pick up the uh, microphone. What do you want to say? I'd like to speak at the end of the meeting. All right, thank you. We're not quite there yet, all right? So we're voting on um, BL 2019-1566 by Council Member Swope. Uh, the motion is to approve, properly seconded. Any other discussion? So, Council Member Swope. If I may, um, isn't the Water Department an enterprise system? Uh, yes. So we don't need to really approve fiscal notes for projects that they're doing because they kind of do them on their own. Council Member Murphy, you're gonna pick up your microphone. In our, in our analysis, it would be helpful to know the fiscal notes, the fiscal impacts, instead of just saying the fiscal note or no fiscal note, fiscal note unknown. So maybe that's something we need to handle internally a little bit more, but on the, this is something that I've had uh, Councilman Benet as planning chair start bumping things from consent that don't have fiscal notes, we need to be more cognizant of this because even though that's, that's still taxpayer money that we're still talking about and allocating. So it's nothing against your project. It's right, these issues a, across the board. We have these whole issues getting ready to be looked at at some point and you may just be put on a special committee for that. Winter is coming. I renew my motion. All right, so winter is coming. Council Member Swope has uh, moved for approval, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-1567, Henderson, Bedney, and O'Connell, all committee reports are in. Authorizes Metro to abandon existing sanitary sewer main and easement for properties located at 3801 and 3909 Hobbs Road. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With the last item on the agenda of this long, long meeting, I move approval, please. So motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Post no, you adopt. Council Member Bedney, you're recognized, real quick. The, the mayor put together this presentation with the committee of uh, the wellness, behavior with health and wellness advisory council. This is for you, council members, please. Uh, pick up this brochure from your desk and consider attending it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Council Member Bedney. Uh, budget hearings start tomorrow at 4.15 in the Metro Council Chamber. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn, probably seconded. All in favor say aye. Opposed no, we are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.